Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Thursday night here in freezing fucking Connecticut, and I hate the weather out here. You can see how I'm dressed. I'm freezing my balls off, but we're here. It's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I'm with my boy Mike over there. It's the Mike and Miss Show. What's up, Mike? Yeah, you're freezing. I'm freezing. We're already set up for Christmas around this part. Look at this thing. Look at Look at, there's some Christmas stuff down here. Look at some here. Christmas stuff over here. Stuff's ready to go. No, no. She's it's not, ready it's, to go. It's not Christmas in the Hunnold house until the background, until that JC Penny background is fucking behind you while we're coming alive, together. Right? I can see it right now. <laughs> All right. Before we uh, bring our first guest of the evening on, we just got to go ahead and shout out our guys over at Gorilla Warfare Apparel. They are our top sponsor. They are very good to us, and they are very good to a lot of fighters. So do yourselves a favor. Go over to GorillaWarfareApparel.com. Use the promo code Mike and Mish. Buy a bunch of cool shit and get 15% off your total purchase. Their clothes are super comfortable. They're super fucking stylish. The guy who owns the company is a former tattoo artist on a tattoo shop for years. He draws all the designs for the, for the gear himself. I got some of it on tonight. Mike's got the GWA shirt on right there. So do yourselves a favor. Do us a favor. Go over there, buy some of that shit, and use our promo code, and we will appreciate you like we appreciate them. Let's go ahead and get our first guest of the evening on. This guy came on the scene with a lot of energy, with a quick knockout at BKFC 32 in Orlando, Florida. He is T. Murph, and he is here. Tony Murphy. What's up, buddy? What's up, my man? What's up? Let me Yo. go ahead and headline this whole event for you. We're back. It's the Mike Mish and Murph show. I done <laughs> told y'all the first time we met. We are back. All right, yeah. we're back. This is the trio right here. <laughs> here we know are. it, recognize it, know it, love it, everybody. Get on board now because this fucking train's rolling. Oh, it's What's rolling, up, baby. dude? Let me tell you no. something, man. We met you down there. You've been in the fight game for over a decade. You've been itching to get back in there, and you and you got back in there in the way of bare knuckle fighting, and it didn't take long. Talk a little bit about getting back in there, fighting professionally, and um, and uh, getting that win. I mean, just to go ahead and say, I noticed y'all had me first on the show because if you ain't first, you're last. So the rest of the people on the show, you better take <laughs> note of that. Uh, but no, no, to be for real, when I met you guys, every emotion y'all felt and I felt was, was beyond truth. Uh, it was a long road, 10 years, bare knuckle, I feel could be tailored for me. Remember when I met you, I said that, and I've had yep. people tell me that that's kind of where I got it from. And, um, we're here. And it, it, like I said, it has been a long road. A lot of fighters that maybe they go unnoticed or maybe they make mistakes like I did, or maybe that people fuck you over like I did. I mean, I'm not pointing fingers. At the end of the day, it just didn't work out for me in MMA. And uh, the bare knuckle started right here in my backyard, Tampa, Florida. I'm a St. Petersburg boy. So, um, obviously, I knew cats like David Mundell coming up. I knew Lorenzo Hunt. I don't know him personally. I knew of him. Uh, Royal Ryan Reaver was, you know, obviously a close friend of mine that got me in MMA uh, from the street game and now has gotten me into the BKFC. And I was – I think y'all felt the emotion. I mean, I was – I even hugged my opponent, like I said, and I let him know, hey, how I'm acting has nothing to do with you, bro. Like, this is just this unbelievable feeling. Nothing in the world, no drug, no party, no nothing could ever replace that moment right there for me. So, and, and I mean, this is just the beginning. And now you got to set the night off, too, man. That's That's got to be something right there. Like, making you – this was your pro debut, right? For a BKFC, I went three and three as a pro in MMA. Three and three is a, pro, a BKFC pro, uh, debut. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, when they when they showed you the placement on the card, when they did you know? I mean, like when you signed the contract, did, did you know where you were on the card? And when you found out that you were going to be setting the tone for the entire night, did that add a little more juice? Like, did you feel it a little bit? It was more? mixed emotions. Part like I'm a very split personality, so you know, half of me was saying, "Hey." It's, you know, kind of nerve-wracking. It's your first fight back in 14 months. You're the first one up. But the other one was saying, fuck that shit. We're here. And exactly what you said, I'm going to set the tone. That is my name, Tony. And that's what we did. My boy Knox <laughs> come out right behind me, and he nailed it too. And, I mean, you couldn't act. And then Reaver goes out there. Obviously, he was up on the dude anyway, but then the headbutt. But what a night for us in the camp and just everything starting out. But being first man up. I, that that probably added on to the emotion. I didn't even realize it at the time. But now that you say that, yeah, it definitely impacted the whole night. And to be real with you, uh, I'm never scared of anybody. I'll fight any man any given day, anywhere, anytime. Um, but 
when I was coming up behind the curtain, y'all were back there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You're behind yeah. the screen. You're coming up. The lady's pointing at where you hit it. And when she said hit it, I felt those nerves. But you can see it on my face. When I stopped and I swallowed and I kind of hit that little grill, I was like, I'm back, bitch. And I could see the swagger on 350 the whole way to the ring. I mean, I just – I could see it. it was That was natural, organic feeling right there. Well, when, when you won the fight, you were souped, right? But I think that – you were more happy, or rather, I should say happier. I don't know what that kind of language I'm using, but you were happier when Fort won than when you won. You oh, did y'all catch that? The they, 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 security stopped me from going back down the ramp, and then I went around the curtains like, I'll fix your ass, and I, I snuck out down the barricade, and I was yeah. hollering, still hollering. I was supposed to be with you guys on the interview. Didn't even know. <laughs> I'm not sure if they got that on, on tape or not. I got to go watch it because you ran, yeah, you ran down like halfway to the ring. And we're hugging them and yelling, and uh, it was. Uh, it, it meant was the awesome. world, bro. Like everyone's got a story, so I don't want to play a violin. I'd rather make people laugh and get hype. But the facts are facts. And when I came back in February and I kind of hit rock bottom, Knox hit rock bottom himself. He had his own journey, but we had a very similar story. And like you know, bad decisions we made, and then on top of that, just people that crossed us. Long story short, when we started this to go to the trials in Jacksonville, we were training in a fucking yoga room at a U Fit. And, I mean, I was putting videos on my Instagram and shit. And I know people were clowning us. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? You fit. And out of, like, people, me and Knox got the deal that we got. And um, we're here. Both of us are, man. Like, fuck. My bad. But I'm, I'm reliving right now. Somebody might get their ass whooped up here because I'm on my shift. I'm on break. What you looking at over there? You better eat your sushi, sir. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, in, in the comments right now, we got some of your people in there. We got Royal Reber in the comments. Let's we go. Got, we got Big Rick Coleman in the I, I, We yep. love Rick, man. Rick's the Let's man. go. Hey, Rick is a – I was going to say soldier, but he's the general now. We're his soldiers. Yeah. When I met Rick and Troy, and I'm not even blowing smoke, like I said, I've been through it, the woodshed and back. These two guys are the real deal. For any fighters coming up or anybody who does business with them, they got your fucking back. Because, look, I, I went ahead. I didn't even know that. I, I told them I, I got two tables sold. Well, it turned out, regardless of why, they didn't get sold. We flipped them tables overnight. And they were they were all over the town. I mean, I've just never had managers put in that kind of effort is really what I'm trying to say. They are some real deal people, and they got your back to the fullest. I just met these people, and they were out there until 2 in the morning trying to get rid of these tables for me to have extra bread that's, in my pocket. That's fucking so, amazing. Dude. That's the yeah. type of people that – uh, that those guys are, you know, when we That's real came deal. down to Tampa, we visited Shift and we did some interviews there with Jared and Crystal and Brandon Allen. And we saw those guys and we already knew Brandon. them. But like, you know, did I say Jared? Yeah, no, no, no. I was smiling because Brandon. Brandon, Brandon I, okay. Brandon, you want to yeah, know what? I thought I said I Jared homie. Allen for no, a second. Brandon, Allen, Brandon Allen's my homie. That's good, dude. I've been saying Jared Allen. He For keeps fucking, reason. he keeps saying Jared Allen. I'm like, so that's the old head, Vikings fucking linebacker. <laughs> but yeah, like Rick Coleman, he, he like, he's, he's the best. He, him and Martin, they, they welcome us with open arms. They say, come and visit us. And then he's like, oh, where are you guys staying? I'm coming by. He comes by, he brings us a bottle of Tito's. I was like, what a friggin' nice guy. This is, that's how he welcomes us to his neck of the woods. Yeah, he didn't put and, you uh, on the, he didn't put you on the Tampa tea yet, did he? You said you got Tito's. Oh, I get... saw the tea. I saw the, the Tampa tea. tea. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stay away from, hey, stay away from the Tampa tea. I'm going to right stay now. away from it. All right, you might next be absent from work. Next time you talk to uh, next time you talk to Rick, ask him who he had his final drink with that night at, in, ta- in, ta- sure. in, uh, in Orlando. And oh him. yeah, if he's yeah. got a story, oh I might have to blow up another God. podcast. It was, if he's got it's, a story. It's, it's a funny ass story, man. It was just a good time. Mike and I were with him. It was just funny. We'll let him tell the story though. It's just some place. This was on that Tampa tea, leaning. All right, <laughs> let's go. You need no, to come so, down to Tampa. Look at you freezing your ass off over there. You know what, dude? And you you guys are out of um what's what's the name of your gym again? Battle Zone? Battle, Battle Zone? Zone Boxing with Coach JB and yep. uh Bo, Bo Hill. Yeah, ba- so James we, Battle, James Battle. Yeah, I call we him were JB. talking with you guys that night. We met JB, he was cool as hell too. Um, I love the energy out of you guys with uh with you and Re- like Reber. Reber and you are who you are from the moment you meet you guys. The moment we meet you guys, you haven't changed one iota. From the time we talked to you at the weigh-ins to, to before the fight to after the fight to like right now, and it's appreciate the same that energy. very much. Same energy. I love that shit about you guys. This shit um, right here feels it feels natural, Miss. Like it, it, it I'm, I'm really. I mean, it's not an act. It's not entertainment. Obviously, you know when I'm in skit mode, I'm not. 
but real recognize real i think we're all at home like mma and i've said this before whether it was i wasn't good enough or whatever the fucking problem was i just didn't feel at home this feels right man i told you in the second interview i feel like i've known these people at, at battle zone and even rick and troy it feels that unity feel i came up in football i say again and i don't know man i just that team chemistry and that that energy i love it i don't want to be by myself like some guys they do in mma good for you bro get the fuck out of here i want to have an army and we run the fucking table and we all put a drink up at the end of the night dude i fucking love it no you know I mean? no hey i want to answer a question real quick in the comments when is hollywood again is december 3rd is the next hollywood card for those who are wondering and that card's going to be awesome you got luis palomino and and uh and and fucking tom shelf at the top and a whole bunch of killers all the way down but dude you're in the 175 pound division you're one and oh you're gonna have to take a couple fights before they start throwing some some uh bigger names at you i want all the smoke i want but, all the fights i want i want to have fun with this miss so i'm i'm sorry i mean to cut you off but i want every, if we could fight week in week out if i'm not cut up let's fucking run it Shit, I might get in a fight tonight. Let's go. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the like the really nice thing about this sport and this company that you're fighting for is that if you come out uninjured, unscathed, and you don't catch yourself a medical suspension, you could be on the very next fight card, like easy. And if they and they'll give and if they're looking for a 175er and you come out untouched and you're like, hey boss. My hands are good. My face is good. Not a cut on me. Not a break. Nothing. Well, you're Keep 100% me in right. And Rick my phone me. will be on. Tell him that. <laughs> Rick called me right after the – like it was two days, maybe a day, two days tops after the Orlando card. And he's like, how you feeling? Whatever. And that's kind of where our focus is at. He said, realistically, it'll probably be in the new year. He's like, but let's stay ready and keep the momentum in our pocket. And, you know, for me, there's two types of people in the world. All right? There's those that say two wrongs don't make a right. And then there's those like me that say, fuck that shit. And I'm gonna ask you something, Miss. You ever took a bull by its horns? I, I well, I do every morning. Lit, lit, I take yo, a piss every morning. I, I just, take a piss. I'm taking the bull by the horn. <laughs> all right. And I'll tell you one thing: none of these fighters are ready for. I'm bringing, baby. It's about it coming. Dual brother entertainment. About his own box of St. Pete. Everybody, get back up security because we ain't there to start trouble, but we damn sure will finish it. And that's real. Sorry, I got a little carried away. I what y'all got, like... got in this water here at work? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nah, man, that's fucking great. Now, nah, you asked me that question, and I had to think for a second because Mike knows this. I I grew up on a farm, <laughs> and I was trying to think if I've actually grabbed a bull by the fucking horn at any point in my life. But I don't think I ever did. I'd probably be dead if I did. But um, well. Like Man, I said, I all I got to do is reach down in the zipper every now and then, and there's a horn waiting <laughs> on me. <laughs> this fucking dude. So, so hey, man. With, with that said, in, yes, in, with a with a guy like Rick, with Rick and Troy in your corner, um, you know they have great relationships with BKFC and the matchmakers there. We know that when we last talked to David Feldman, they're gonna have like three times as many fight cards next year. They're looking at like. At, at least two a month, if not three a month, there's going to be opportunities for yeah. you to fucking to, to work for sure. Well, you know, I like you guys. I have from the start, but now you're just making my head bigger than it already is. And you see this beer can <laughs> head, you know what I mean? But uh, now, honestly, like if that's the, if that's the angle that they're going and obviously they're the fastest combat sport growing. Uh, people oh, yeah. need to catch on to that. They may not be as big as UFC and all some, but, but they're, as far as year for year ratings, they are on some other shit, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. And if that's the goal, and they can get me in the cards, and I'm healthy, like you said yourself, dude, I'll fight. I mean, what's the difference in sparring and taking an ass whooping for free? Let's fight for money. Yeah. Dude, look at look Definitely. at Gogo Slavesky, Gogo from um, Slaughterhouse. Gogo is five and zero oh in seven months. Well, that's how you you know that's how you got to do it. If, if yeah. you're gonna do it, and you're gonna rise. But remember Connor back when he came up? How'd he do it? It wasn't it was the shit talk and his personality and all that. But dude. He, he put it five, six wins in a year or some crazy mm -hmm. or a couple years, some crazy shit like that. You know, so, I mean, if you're going to do it, that's how you do it. Yep. Even even the year that you're talking about, Connor, even the year that like he took over the world in 2016, he fought four times that year and he fucking won two world titles in, in, in a 12 month calendar year. He won two world titles and fought four times, twice against Nate Diaz, once against Eddie Alvarez and once against fucking Jose Aldo. And beat the number one pound for pound guy in the world, 
beat the 155 five pound champion and and beat Nate Diaz. So do you ever do you ever do you ever I don't know if I'm allowed to ask on the show. Are, do you ever bet on fights? Obviously not the ones you're working. I don't know how that works, but do you do you get into that or no? I'm not, um, a, big, I'm not a big better. I never really ever even bet anything. Okay. So. I bet I bet on NFL football games and I do play fantasy sports, but as far as betting on fights, I I do bet on UFC fights and I don't do okay. very well. I don't do that's, very well at them to be honest. That's with you. what I was talking about and you bringing up that year. I had Aldo against McGregor, lost that one, right? Then I had um I had who was it? It was Ronda against Holmes. OK, yeah. and then I had Holmes against Tate. And that's when I said, fuck this. I'm done with the, with the bet and shit. I'm like, it's over. I'm done. And that's that's true story. I lost all three of those. I, I mean, how the hell? So I'm done with the betting. Oh, the, the, yeah. I mean, the, the fucking Holmes and Tate one, though. Oh, <laughs> that one yeah, all and, and I, the end of the I fight and then she lost. I trained her to stream and I knew that Tate, you know, I knew Misha was a bad bitch. Don't get me wrong. And I, and I, I mean, she's a good person, too, like on, on and off the mat. But the fact of the matter is, like, I just didn't think she was bringing enough for that. And who could have called that the rear naked? I think that no. was, like, one of Robert Fallis's last uh, fights that he cornered was was yeah. able to be a part of before he left. And I was actually yeah. there for his reunion as well. And she put her she put her to sleep. Like, Holly didn't tap. She went Yeah, she, went she did, night. like, the... She did the... Uh, yeah, trying to climb out of there. I think a lot hey, of fighters Mer- got good Mer- acting skills nowadays. They do that shit. They know just tap, just get out of the ring. You know what I mean? Like you motherfuckers know, acting like they're falling asleep, but they're not. Yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> listen, listen, Marissa in the comments says we bet on how many vodka gummies Kyle could eat. That's a true story. And Mike has a video of that. And I think we have shown that on this show one time, but maybe we can send that to, to old T Murph over here so he can take a look at it. I would love I, to see that. I put a I put about a softball size ball of fucking vodka soaked gummies in my stupid face at one time and fucking ate the whole oh marissa says it was 50 she said 50 <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm not about to go 51 on that one i don't know me and drinking nah, no way yeah no, no, forget no. all that i mean shit. i'll get a little tipsy don't get me wrong but getting sick <laughs> them days are long gone because i used to be frank the tank you remember old school that was murder yeah. <laughs> trust me on that so uh <laughs> look hey, looking at the middleweights do you have anybody in mind in that division that you're kind of checking out? Like, hey, maybe I want to fight this dude, you know? You call him out. You maybe get us some, a little a little bit of back and forth, and uh, BKFC takes notice. I think you guys know that I'm very blunt, and I'm going to speak exactly what's on my mind. But right now, I'm going to say all of them doesn't matter just because I'm still new. Mm-hmm. I still don't really know what's going on or who's who. I mean, I have an idea, but let me let me get more in the doorway before I own the home. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you right now, I'm there to clean house and own that bitch and then tear it down and rebuild it. So I just, I don't know, man. I I just, uh, I just want to keep the momentum in my pocket and whoever's next or whatever, I'll fight any of them. It doesn't matter at any given time, except one of them that's actually fighting for the belt, Dave Mundell. Me and Dave have a history, actually. We were rivals as amateurs, right? Then we became homies, trained together. He was in my corner for my pro debut. I've always been there for him as well when he needs it. And so me and him are real tight. We're under the same management. He'd probably be the only one. I mean, because we're just close, and there's too many weeds out there to weed out to sit there and fight each other. Am I scared yeah. of him? No, is he scared of me? I know he's not. We spar all the time. It ain't nothing. I'm just saying that anyone else in the division, come get it. Step up and let's do it. Now, before we uh, – we're going to play a little fucking game with old, with uh, with Tony Murphy over here. All right, here we go. And it's going to be fun. But before I do that, I want to tell you that who who backstage was ecstatic about your win. And it was big boy Chris Jensen. Can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with big boy? Because I got to tell you, man, when you won that, he was he was a – he was fucking jumping up and down in the back. He was so proud of you. Me and Big Boy, we go way back coming up in the same region. So when Amateur MMA started, it was the year I started. And uh, we kind of set that shit off, whether he was coaching guys, he was fighting in the RFC at the time. We always seen each other at shows. And it, um, and then it went into when I pro debuted, my opponent pulled out. He saved the promotion by getting a guy for me. So he corners the guy. Well, you know, I'm I'm just in the moment of being me. So I'm in the middle of the ring. I'm in side control wh- whooping this dude's ass. And I hear Chris yelling something. And I look up at him and flick him off in the middle of the ring. <laughs> and so everybody's like, oh, he flicked you off. But at the end, we hugged each other. And anyway, to answer your question, we just, just coming up through the same region, man. Just knowing people, training together. Him always being at the amateur shows when I first started. 
he probably feels like kind of like a big brother role. You know what I mean? Cause he was mm-hmm. fighting at the time, but he was a little bit bigger than I was. Um, so yeah, that, that, that actually touches my heart. It makes me feel very good that he genuinely cared. Cause you guys know as well as I do, the one thing that's shitty about this world today, and I, I try not to be negative, but <clears throat> not everybody is smiling or laughing or proud with you. You know what I mean? They can act all they want. So when you come across somebody that's genuine cares, it means a lot. And it sounds like he did getting what I'm getting from y'all. Absolutely. Yeah, he did. He, I, it was, it was pure for sure. He was back there like a kid on Christmas, fucking just got his new bike. He was fucking pumped. Um, That's, and Chris that, that seems like, a, a, to me. That means yeah, a lot he's a, that. he's Thank a good, you, yeah, he's a good dude too. We talked, we, we hang out with Chris almost every single event that we uh, go to him being media as well. We, we're always running into each other. We always help each other out too. If, if I get, if I get an interview with somebody and he couldn't get their hand, he's letting you he couldn't get his arm around them. I'll fucking direct him in his direction and vice versa. He, we he help each other out. So he couldn't believe he was looking so sharp for the interview. I said, "Damn, Chris, oh, yeah. you look." Like, I said, "You look like a meteorologist." He said, "Yeah, I'm doing the <laughs> weather now too." I said, "Well, you know, the forecast predicts a lot of ass whipping tonight. That's what we're predicting." Ah, uh, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's always fucking dressed to the ninth. Yep, yep, yep. That, that Susan Singari keeps him, uh, keeps him in like he's going to be going to court soon. Keeps him you looking I mean? proper. <laughs> He looks fresh. Yeah, man. Wait till right, I hey, start e- looking fresh. Everybody, hey Tony, do you have anything so, else besides uh, Instagram? We always put your uh, social medias of the fighters all across the I bottom. I really appreciate it's- that. I man, I I got I don't know. I had to start over fresh. I only can I only have Instagram right now. Uh, everybody's like, gotta get on TikTok, gotta do this, gotta do that. I feel like yeah. if I just keep racking up wins, keep running into good people like y'all that you know you want to throw a, a brother a bone and put you on the show, it will all come. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just I'm old school. I don't really want to be sitting here operating 400 different fucking yeah. things. It's too much anxiety Absolutely. for me. It that's sucks. just the truth, and it, it does. And I know, I know that's the name of the game today, and you got to do it. But yeah. did I do good enough? I can juggle in my Instagram and staying on time. <laughs> All right, man. Well, when any, you, hey, when you when you got when you got a list of women like I do, you know, you got you got places to be, yeah, and it ain't yeah. a lot of time in a day. <laughs> wheeling and dealing i was thinking the same jet fl- exact thing. <laughs> wheeling dealing kiss stealing jet flying. Oh, we're Rolex. just getting started i'm trying Son to be humble bitch. i'm trying to be humble but we start getting to the big fights the name is across the top just wait for what's in store for the public because it's going to be all she wrote oh wheeling, man we can't wait to see what happens son we- of a gun thank you guys Woo! thank you guys yeah, yeah, i appreciate can't wait. y'all yeah, man. One year from now, I can't wait to see where you're at in this company. But uh, and in the sport, here we go. We're gonna play a game called Pick One. All we're gonna do is offer you three things, and you gotta take one. All right, here you go. Right. Pick one with T Murph. First one up: beer, vodka, or whiskey. Whiskey. Woo! Whiskey. Quick, quick to the yeah. whiskey. Everyone goes yeah. to the whiskey. Mike would go I to the know. vodka. I mean, I'm try, I try to be good with it, but I mean, shit. If we're, we might as well skip beer and go straight to a shot of the whiskey. <laughs> I'm, I'm vodka like every time. Absolutely. I I'll drink any of it. To, uh, vodka for I used to drink beer a lot, but I just completely stopped. Yeah. All right. Well, hold on. I got to resend the link to our next guest real quick. Here yeah. comes number two. Here we go. Number two: Fruit Loops, Tricks, or Fruity Frickin' Pebbles. I'm gonna go with Fruity Pebbles because Cocoa Pebbles are my favorite. Oh. Cocoa pebbles, pebbles all the way out. You know what I mean? You just bunch them all up, and then they kind of get a little like mushy, but not too mushy, and you still got a little crunch at the top. Perfect. <laughs> yep, that's it. They're so good. Oh my! Number God. three. This one's a tough one. Would you rather? Uh, what are you gonna? What would you rather take? A nut shot, a fight. an eye poke, or shit your pants? I definitely <laughs> shit my pants because I control that one. I shit my pants because if anyone else touches me, they're gonna be shitting their pants. All right, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody poking me or hitting me in my nuts, all right? And if you do hit me in my nuts, you better have a hard fucking hand because I got some steel brass nuts. Yeah. Nah, definitely shit my pants because you can clean them. You ain't poking me or fucking hitting me in the dick. It ain't happening. So in the arena, you're just going to drop an old fucking deuce biggie, huh? If it has to happen, it might go viral. You know what I mean? Might it go will viral. go viral. Yeah. So, you know I mean, shit. It, it would go viral. If I got to right. be shit brick, I'll be shit brick, but I bet I'll shit beat brick. someone's ass. Yeah, uh, that shit is funny. A little, a little, a little American dude. Pie shout out there. Here we go. Oh, dude, best question. franchise ever. Best franchise last ever. Qu- <laughs> last question. Italian, Italian food, food, Chinese food, Chinese Mexican food, food, or Mexican food. Oh man, it had to be out of Italian or Chinese. I love me some Chinese food. I'm gonna go with Chinese, man. I'm not gonna lie. I love Italian. I love all of it, but Chinese food is it's the bomb. Sushi, lo mein, rice, chicken, oh. all steak. 
I just I love it. I love Chinese food. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. I'm with you on that one. I love Chinese food, but my my wife only likes it like once every six months, and it makes me want to divorce her on a monthly basis. But um, <laughs> but bye bye. <laughs> yeah, get your shit together, Amy. Nah, I'm just joking. I love love me some Chinese food. I'm sorry I wasn't looking at the screen right there. I was trying to uh. You know, with you're, a, with adjust, a, you're adjusting your horn. Just say what it is. You don't have yeah, to be around the bush. Adjust, it's it's in, a team mode, baby. I'm part of the show now. It's a trio. You know, you, you know what it is though. When you when you run a live show every week, um, something happens. Connections and links, and I got a bad link, and I yeah. don't have a good connection right now. Can you send me a new link? That shit happens all the fucking time. Or, or maybe you're pulling a Bill Clinton, and there's somebody up under a desk. That's what I want to know. Amy. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Not an nah, if you got a miss, I apologize. Wouldn't be <laughs> nah, man, it's great talking to you. It's good to see you again. We can't wait to get you back on this show because I'm assuming you're going to have a fight sometime in like January, February, maybe. And before you fight at. that fight, you need to come on here and promote that shit. We'll talk to Rick. That. We'll talk to you. Take a second, deliver a message to anybody that's watching that, that, that needs to hear whatever you got to say. Say thank you and so long, and we'll let you get out of here. Man. Well, first and foremost, thank you, too, like straight up. I mean, since I've met y'all, y'all been down to earth. Y'all seem like, you know, I said those people cut from my cloth. I feel in a way y'all are cut from the cloth, Diane, too. We just naturally can laugh and get vibe, and that's very rare. Uh, obviously, big shout out to Dual Brothers, Rick and Troy. We've heard a lot about them on the show, and you're going to continue to hear more about them because without them, none of this shit came together. And I couldn't be any more loyal and uh, just thankful for them. And then obviously the gym, Battle Zone. We're at home. We're expanding now. Anybody Clearwater, St. Pete, Pinellas Park, Largo, the whole Pinellas County, we're taking over. And uh, that gym is something you want to look into if you got, if you want to box, if you got fitness goals, whatever it is. Battle Zone Boxing, check them out. That's uh, James Battle and Coach Bo Hill. Uh, shout out to Royal Reaver, the homie. Obviously, he's he's making himself well known, and you know he he's been a big part of my career. We'll talk about that another time, but. He introduced me off the street fighting game into my first coach in MMA. Ten years later, he brings me into BKFC. What a selfless person to do something like that when he's having his time. Um, yeah, shout out to my brother and everybody in St. Pete that supports me. We are looking for sponsors. You can hit up Dual Brother Management or hit me up on Instagram. It's Tony Murphy, the H, and Murphy is the number four. And basically, uh, we're just going to end this with how we started. If, you ain't, if you're in first, you're fucked. Y'all ask me who I want. I want everybody. I want all the smoke. I want all the money. And I want to get every – I want to squeeze every little bit of last fighting I have in this body. And I got a lot of ass whippings and had my ass whipped a whole bunch. So, like I said, we're here for the long run. And, and I appreciate you guys very much. About sure. it. Awesome. awesome, man. Mike, Thank you. you got anything else for Tony? Nah, man. Thank you so much. Y'all have to a great see night. Very soon. Love, we'll bro. talk to you see soon, man. Later. Yes, sir. There he is, T. Murph, Tony Murphy. I'm going to tell you, man, like I said it earlier in this interview, that energy that that dude has was from the second we met him. Oh, I know. From the know. second it's we the met best. him to this to, to right now, the dude has not changed a fucking bit. And I love that, man. He's on. Yeah. He's He's got it cranked to 11 pretty much the entire time. It's fucking awesome, man. Didn't he? The first thing he said to you was something like, I wake up every day and I piss excellence. Yeah, and he was he, like, oh, was, no, no, I'm kidding. And then the next time you talked to him, he was like, you started off. You're like, you went in there. You did your thing. How do you feel? And he was like, I don't know what to do with my hands right now. You know, so I was like, this guy <laughs> yeah. always, always yeah, with man. something, you know, uh, that's how you got to be. Yeah. Yeah, good dude. Uh, thank you to Tony Murphy for coming on. We have another uh, another killer, man. Last time we saw him was down in Albuquerque when he was spoiling somebody's party. Another <laughs> slaughterhouse fighter down, down in, at an event, spoiling the party for somebody. You guys know yeah. him. He is the pit bull, and he's fighting December 3rd. His name is Jeremy Smith. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? How you doing? We're doing uh, good. We're always doing good, yeah. man. How are you? I'm not. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, well, we're hoping you're coming it. to bring the party and not spoil the party, right? Let's, come on. <laughs> I didn't oh, spoil right. any party. <laughs> <laughs> you're spoiling people's parties. Just, what did I do? Just I taking out another hometown do. guy, you know? No big deal. <laughs> that was deal. my job. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hell of an ass guy, by the way. Donald Sanchez was a hell of an ass guy. Yeah, yeah. Very, definitely. very solid guy. Does, I just remember hearing, like, yeah, man. He's selling all these tickets. A lot of people here to see him. He's a big time guy. Like, you know, he's going to go out yeah. there and do his thing. And then the next thing you know, you're getting your hand raised like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Old fans are like, get the fuck out of here. 
and I, <laughs> people are pissed. Uh, well, all the friends were cool afterwards. They were all getting yeah. pictures with me. They were like very cool. It's a great fight town. Great fight town. Yeah, it was a yeah, very very very. So Even the Jer- guy who gave me a left home was actually his friend. Because <laughs> so, the Ubers weren't working. They didn't pick us up from the venue. Yeah. So the one guy who gave us a ride home was actually his friend. You came there to support him. So it's like, funny you say that because there was a few people that asked for rides. Like, hey, do you guys have cars? And I was thinking, like, we were thinking to ourselves, like, they don't get these guys rides. Like, is there nobody here? The and Ubers there was one shuttle out. going back and yeah. forth. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. We we had we in our car alone on the way back from the arena, we had someone from first round management. We had Joel Paul Chapman, who's another podcaster in our yeah. car, and then we the had some other table. dude. It was yeah, it was the like dude had a whole fucking table with him. Yeah, he had a whole table in the back of the car. We yeah. had a rental like little mini SUV, and this motherfucker throws a goddamn table in the back of it. <laughs> this shit was, it was well. That's crazy. the lovely thing about a rental. It's a pickup, it's a taxi, it's a four by four, yeah. it's a racing car. It's whatever you want it to be at the top. <laughs> I've never had so many people in our car. And these events, then, then I feel like I'm back in high school and we're doing like an all nighter <laughs> with the book, like, oh, we're going out all night. You know, we're just driving <laughs> around aimlessly all over the state. We you do the same it, thing now as adults where we're there. We're fucking driving at two o'clock in the morning with grown yeah. ass men just packed into the back seat going to the hotel. Like, oh, yeah. we're going to go there and have some drinks. It's 2.30 in the we morning. We never grow up, bro. Men never grow up. Oh, no, people no, never no. grow up. Dude, you know that yeah. you're here. You're here on the show tonight. Once again, we've had you on a few times now, but you are here in the midst of a of a slaughterhouse takeover this week. You are the yeah. fourth slaughterhouse fourth, fighter of fourth. the week, and we got yeah. two two more coming on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, we we talked about it with El Gallo and Rambo yeah. and HD. You guys are are putting together one of the most impressive squads in the bare knuckle game right now. That's and, uh, for sure. We definitely are. And I I asked them the same thing, man. Tell me what the vibes like within the team and in the gym, and how much are you? We all how, friends. How much is iron shepherding iron here, dude? Is it fucking? Well, that's what sharpens iron is iron. So we work together. We help each other where we can, and we all we it's a team. There's no iron team. It's all of us together working to. Help each other get better and better. And it's a family. Team's the wrong word. It's a family. Who are you on the in the team? Are you the big brother that's that's got to clean up messes every once in a while? Or, uh... <laughs> I have more experience, but I'm not the big brother who cleans up messes. <laughs> no, I have like obviously I'm a little bit older than them, and I've got a little bit more fight experience. So I just relay knowledge where I can. So obviously mine was. MMA background, cutting weight, whatever this, that, like whatever I can help with. I've got a supplement shop as well, so the guys need to do their supplements. I know a lot about dieting, tricks to drop the weight, so I just add where I can. That's awesome. You got a little side hustle yeah. too, huh? Well, that's I, th- I bought a business to get into the to come here. So oh, oh, okay. That's that's how you yeah. got to Florida. Yeah, I'm an investment visa. I feel like we might have spoken about this the very first time. We did. Yeah, yeah, we did. The first, first time. I think it was my third time with you guys. Yeah, Yeah. I think so, man. (laughs) Yeah. The first time was like a year and a half ago, I think. It was a while. Yeah, a year, I think, yeah. Because you were like supposed to fight. I feel like you were trying to get to KFC, but then you went to BYB. BYB, yeah. It was a one-fight deal, BYB, and then BKFC. Then I joined Slaughterhouse afterwards, and they put Yep. 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 So, dude, they're 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 matching you up with this kid, Leo Valdivia. I, I yes. hope I said his name. Valdivia, Valdivia. I think so. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I don't know too much about him other than when I looked him up and saw that he does have nine pro fights, and he looks like a, a in pretty. MMA. Yeah, in a nine MMA fights, he looks like a, a pretty yeah. decently well put together dude. We know that you're a fucking monster. Yeah. Um, what are you expecting out of this kid when you see him in December? And uh. You know, are we looking for a, are we looking for a highlight real knockout, or are we uh, just looking to continue just staying on your winning ways? Are we looking? You know, when you look for a knockout, you don't get it. So we just go in there to prepare to fight. Like I know this guy's been off. I don't know when last he fought. I think it was a couple of years back. 
Um, he hasn't fought bare knuckle before, and bare knuckle, bare knuckle is different. He's done MMA, which helps a lot. He's done karate background, so it's all going to help it, but it's not bare knuckle. So, right. I we mean, know that you've seen it. There's guys who come over from every background, every experience, and they come over and it's just it's different. You know, be my fourth. Yeah, being the um, now like the seasoned veteran in combat sports that you are, you've done a lot of MMA. You've done you, now. You've done four. This will be your fourth bare knuckle. Yeah. What would what would you say is is the best um, the best translating like martial art to bare knuckle? What would you, what would you say would well, would translate? The obviously, it's going to be boxing. But the thing with the boxing is you got the big glove that you can kind of protect behind. So it's the combination of the MMA and the boxing because in MMA you use that little uh, training and you get through a lot more with that. So I find that a lot of the boxers might actually just hold back like this yes. and then actually the sneak punches get through. In the MMA, we know we can't just do this. We have to block with our forearms and like, lift it up. So it's a combination of the two. You can't just say one is going to be better than the other. Yeah, I, I see a lot of people that come from boxing and they they do what you're saying and it seems like yeah. they get caught up a lot where they're you know not taking a break but like when they're not actively on the offense they're holding yeah. their hands and they're too it's too wide and they get caught a lot with that yeah. um because they're used to the glove, the glove right. you, you know who got caught with that a lot at the beginning was bobo o'bannon when Bo because bobo okay. was like what bobo was like 10 and 0 as a pro wasn't he like he he had a decent pro box but like when he first started, that that's okay. what he he did this, and yeah, he just he he got the glove. Yeah, yeah, he left that little yeah. opening right down the middle, and mm -hmm. guys would sneak shots. And your through. hands sneak through, and then twisting them in different. So, so the MMA sparring because MMA gloves, MMA gloves, so it's just your hand. Yeah. Now you win this one. Uh, where do you think this puts you in the conversation in uh, in bare knuckle here? You um. Well, hopefully it pushes me closer to the top. <laughs> right, right. I, I mean, That's the goal, obviously. Is this fight going to be at 180? What, what is this? Yes, 185. 185? Yeah. And, you, and you're more comfortable in the 185 division? Because didn't you I take one, one of the fights? Didn't you go up to 205 or? 195. 195. <clears throat> 195. So, so the 195, 185, and now 185. Okay. I don't mind either. Like I can do both. I've got to cut weight to 185. I just cut this weight to 195. When you see guys like, um, you know, with with you and the amount of experience that you have and the success that you've had, um, do you do you take a look at guys like Mike Richmond and Isaac Doolittle and Jared Warren? Uh, are you are you course, sizing these guys to. up because because you you think that you know that you're going to be in there with these guys? They're all potential too. targets. They're all potential opponents. Right. Uh, but if I'm not looking at them and watching them and seeing what they're doing, that's silly. It, it could be very your enemy. I think it could be very soon for you, actually. Yeah. I think you win yeah. this one, and you're right in there with those guys, with those top top yeah. five guys in the 185 pound division, and they have to recognize that. And especially coming from a camp like you're coming, and with you know yeah. with, with the you know the BKFC cheat code or the BK cheat code in your corner <laughs> over there, the guy seems yep. to have a game plan that that works. Yeah, you know, <laughs> percent of the time. Yeah, he knows his shit. He studies well. So he studies the past. He studies your opponents. He studies your strengths as well. He puts into play. He's not going to try to reinvent the wheel. He works on what he's good at. Yeah, you know, I, I can't wait to see you fight one of these guys up there. Not saying I'm not can't wait to see you fight your yeah. next opponent, but like, <laughs> listen, I don't overlook wins. anybody. I don't yes. overlook anyone. This is my target, right? This is my opponent, right? This is what I'm focused. On. Everything else we'll talk about afterwards. Then right. I can say, okay, cool, sweet. What's next? Let's let's challenge this get rid of this challenge first and then we move on to what next yep now you guys oh, have uh you guys <clears throat> have have a teammate out there in omaha nebraska this weekend headlining that fight uh, that fight card joey beltran uh, yep. a veteran in the game uh, an old school guy who uh yeah. who was who was at one point in his career the most take take two to give one guy you've ever seen but was very mm -hmm. successful with that <laughs> shit so now yeah. we talk to him and we know that he's been sharpening his, uh, you know, his technical skills a little bit in there with you guys. Yeah. I'm sure you've done some sparring with Joey 
yeah, just a bit. For this. <laughs> how yeah, how are you how are you feeling about Joey heading in there this weekend? Oh, he's I think he's much better at the two oh five. Um he's putting his punches together, he's throwing more punches, punches and bunches. He's not just counting a one two move around. I think uh, he's he's gonna give Alex a hard time. He's definitely I think my money's on it. Hundred percent. He's been training hard. His cardio is fucking great. Um, his power, speed is better. Power is better, and he's also not taking as much damage. So he's moving around more. He's defending better. He's moving better. So I think the two of the cut down to two of five for him was, was just very called for. Yeah, and uh, right in the comments right there, big shout out, Big Ben. Big Ben's out there in Omaha. He was at the weigh-ins tonight. He said, Joey, look great. We saw the weigh-ins yeah. on the app and on YouTube and everything, and Joey did. He looked great at 205. He looked comfortable. He didn't look all yeah. fucking strung out and drawn. He wasn't drained. We did the we did the cut nicely. He did it well. It wasn't like, he wasn't killing himself. He was still had, still had energy to train. He wasn't dehydrating starving, he's still, he's still explosive, which is important. As we all know, a cut can win or five. I always hate seeing that. You know, I obviously yeah. it's part of the game and you see it all the time. Yep. And it's probably not going to end anytime soon, but no. there's always that <laughs> there's always that thought in the back of my head that when I see somebody like that and then they fight the next day, if they do lose, I always think to myself, like, were they you know, as close to a hundred percent as they could be, yeah. you know, like, cause obviously no one's every, ever a hundred percent, but if they could be 90, yeah. could you get back to 90 from that disheveled position that you're in? You could be come back at like 60. So I always think that like, what if he didn't cut all this weight or she didn't cut all this weight? How well would they have done? I, I just, I hate that weight cutting, man. It's the worst. It really is. It's always a thing, but again, people know how to do it. There's science to it. I mean, we just talked to a couple of your. We just yeah. talked to a couple of your teammates yesterday, and that crazy man Brian Duran was in the car with Gogo, and he's like, "Yo, he's like, <laughs> he's like, listen, man, I don't." He's like, "I'm bigger than these motherfuckers at 155." He goes, "I cut four, I cut forty fucking pounds to get that." I'm like, "Jesus, dude, mm -hmm. that's a lot. That's a big." Look, cut. I used to do big cuts like that, but now, like, you know, I found it's rather try to walk around. Also, if you want to take a last minute fight. You know, yeah. someone always gets injured, someone pulls out, you want to say, okay, cool, speed, I can do a catch weight, like five pounds different, or like 10 max if it's a couple of days. But you want to be, okay, cool, speed, if you get a three-week fight, you can say, yeah, I can make it, maybe. Yeah, like we like we said, like even some of the greats, like remember, you remember when um, like Mc Conor McGregor used to fight at 145, what he used to look <laughs> like? He used to oh, look like a fucking, he looked like he was straight but also off his a age was on his, he was younger. Yeah, that's it's just a lot scary. easier to recover. So the most I ever did was in four hours. I did eight kilos, which is like seventeen pounds. In four like hours, four or five hours. Yeah, I felt like oh, shit. Shit. So I, bet. I, I bet. Won. You like shit. I won. I won. I could actually balance on the scale, but listen, it wasn't <laughs> healthy at all. But again, I was twenty-four years old. It was a lot wow. easier to recover. Man, if I miss lunch, no, I'm not doing work, that I'm again. Fucking like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I got to sleep. Can somebody five. drive the car home. I don't think I can stay away. <laughs> oh no, I couldn't drive. I would have been angry. I didn't drive. I could hardly stand. You basically, yeah, you're basically and, driving yeah. under the influence at that point. Well, somebody was driving me. Fuck that. That's worse than driving under the influence. That's like, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, yeah. man. That ain't well. Good. Well, dude, we, we can't wait to see you back in there December 3rd. Yeah, you guys are I'm doing another. You guys are taking over the joint once again. The Slaughterhouse Boys yeah. are always coming heavy in the fucking Hollywood hard rock. We're going to do yeah. a quick thing with you real quick. It's going to be called Eliminate One. All you got to do, yeah. we're going to give you three things, and you just got to get yeah. rid of one of them, right? Three things, get rid of one. Here we go. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise, bang, gone, out of yeah, here. Come on now. Get fuck out of here. Out of there, there you go, Mike. Sitting in traffic, waiting in lines, or automated mm. customer service? That one's difficult. Back home, we never had customer service. Like, so I would say like, all three of those things suck. Eh? They all suck. All, all suck. Yeah, sitting in traffic. Get rid of sitting in traffic. There yeah. you go. Too easy. Do you know that? Okay, Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler, Will Ferrell, get rid of one of them. Oh, all three good. Uh, Will Farrell. All right, and the last one. Will Farrell, huh? no more Elf. That's it. Yeah, no, but Adam good. Sandler and Jim Carrey, come on. I know. Yeah, I know. It's, Adam Sandler is great. 
Those are okay. They're all three of those are great. But did you listen yeah. to like the Adam Sandler cassette tapes back in the day with the Toll Booth Willie and all that shit? Yes, of course. Those are the best. <laughs> yeah, but Adam Sandler was the best. Like, come on, Happy Gilmore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, he's yeah. safe. Adam yeah. Sandler. Yeah, yeah, he's safe. He's safe. Jim and Jim Carrey, the mosque. Come on. Yeah. Last one. Here we go. Pizza, cheeseburgers, tacos. Hmm. Peace out. I don't know. That's difficult, eh? Uh, I like pizza and cheeseburgers. I can't even give tacos back home. So if I was in South Africa, I'd say tacos. Yeah, I'll go cheeseburgers. <laughs> Here you go, cheeseburgers. All right, man. Yeah, all pizza. Dude, unless I'm in New York. New York pizza stays. <laughs> Nice. Yes. Hey, you ever come up to New England? You come up around our area. We got some of the best pizza in the world in, yes. in the Connecticut, New New Haven yeah. area. Oh, definitely come up. You guys gonna come down for the fudge? That's up in the air still. But yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's okay. looking good, bro. Ah, Anyways, sure. man, always a good time talking to the thank pit bull, so Jeremy much, Smith. Appreciate thank you, you for coming on. Do you have anything you. you have to say before we let I you just go? Wanna, thanks to my sponsors for supporting me. Gotinjured.com. Think VRP, think VP, sorry, uh, Renew Life, Laser Therapy, obviously Condemned Laboratories, for the best supplements in the game, Dodd uh, Construction, yeah, just thanks to them. Yeah. There it is. As well, streaming thing. And yeah, just uh, tune in, guys, enjoy the fights, and yeah, uh, I think we put on last week's show. All right, I think you Thanks to might... you guys for having me again. Of Thank course, you. everybody follow him on all his on his social media. Is use his referral code if you haven't gotten the app yet, and tune in on December third when he fights. Val, Val, say the name. Leo Valdavia. Leo Valdavia. Valdavia. <laughs> Valdavia. All right, brother. We'll talk to you Thanks, soon. Guys. Right? Appreciate you, man. Take Have it easy. Good evening. There he is, the pit bull. I always fucking fuck the names up. It's funny. Yeah, it's, uh, it's become part of the show. We just let you just try to show. roll with those yes, names. Kyle fucks up another name. We have another slaughterhouse guy in here. We got another bad boy who's going to be fighting on December 3rd. His nickname is actually bad. He is Blake Davis, and he brought the house down last time he fought in the Hard Rock. He's looking to do that again. Here he is. Bad Blake Davis. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Hey. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing well. We was watching some Monday Night Football or Thursday Night Football. Thursday Night then, Football, uh, yeah, yeah, Just joined yeah. the chat, so I'm sitting here at the table. You yeah. know, do you play fantasy football? I do, yes, and I'm yeah. playing against Derrick Henry tonight. Oh, shit. So yeah. my, my team, I have a fantasy football team. I'm in three different leagues, and I'm doing very well in all of them, but one of my teams just got just absolutely decimated by fucking injuries. And I had to, um, I had to go to the well. I had to go to the the waiver wire and try to find some help. And um, I am putting faith in the old man, Aaron Rodgers, tonight. As, uh, uh, I hope he's not fucking up. Is he fucking up? Um, actually, what's the score right now? <laughs> it's fourteen to six. We're losing, so he ain't doing so good. Oh shit! Yeah. All right. Well, well, that sucks. I just ruined my night. Thanks, man. We'll let you go now. No, I'm just joking. Uh, dude, welcome to the show. This is the Mike and Miss show. We've we've talked to all your team and we talked to, uh, to Ryan Perez all the time, but we just never got a chance to talk to you when we were in Hollywood and uh, we were we were trying to and uh, we're welcoming you to the show tonight. Um, la like I said, last time we were down in Hollywood Hard Rock, it seemed like you had the biggest pop from the crowd it was it was i want to say it was yuli on that card because he's like the only other guy that gets a pop he was card. yes yes it was it was like you and yuli sold the damn place out and then uh after yuli left everyone left <laughs> yeah was, pretty much so that does so, happen a lot yeah it's crazy man so tell us a little bit about yourself and uh and your and your following down there because that's what caught our eye. Obviously, other than the fact that you're fucking enormous and you know how to box and you uh and you got the nice victory that night. Other than that, we didn't we didn't personally know too much about you. Yeah. Uh well, you know, I came into the BKFC uh as a nine and pro boxer. I've actually had my first three pro fights were at the Hard Rock there, and I actually sold that place out as well, my first three fights. Um, my first fight, I was like one of the first first fights of the evening. And same thing like you guys saw. After I fought, the whole crowd left. Um, so for my second fight on, I was like pretty much almost the last fight of the night. Um, then I started my own promotions. I had bad promotions. 
uh, hosted like five events all at Gulfstream Park or actually three of them were at Gulfstream Park in Hollandale Beach, Florida. Two of them were in Weston. Um, and, you know, just the boxing industry is just fucked up, man, to be honest with you. You know, it's tough to rise and to make it and you got to be signed by these big promoters and it's so political and everything stays and political and, um, you know, so I kind of got out of it for a little while and then uh, Bare Knuckle gave me an opportunity and I just fell in love with it, man. You know, I've been street fighting my whole life, so it's nothing new to me. And I actually feel like I'm more effective as a bare knuckle fighter than I am a boxer. So I feel like with my style and my attributes and my power, um, you know, I just feel like this is my real passion. What do you like about the bare knuckle aspect better than glove? Each punch is more effective. So these guys can't walk through any of my shots. You right. get a little bit more on everything. Yeah. yeah, those punches land, especially when you're there, even for the fan to hear that, those shots land, it's a totally different story. I mean, we've been to boxing, MMA, kickboxing. It's not even close to the same. When that when those punches hit flush, it is loud as hell. And it's it sounds like it hurts a lot. That bone on bone. Yeah. Right. Right. And you can get the job done a lot quicker too. Yeah. Like uh exactly. when you don't have the pillows on. You know, I was mm -hmm. looking at your record and uh and I wanna say, dude, was it was like your second or third Amy fight as a boxer, and you fought a dude that had like a hundred and fucking eighty fights. <laughs> well, that was actually that was my seventeenth fight. For some reason, oh, almost, is box rec almost, all fucked listen, up? Listen, I've got like, I've got like thirty amateur fights. And oh, okay. Box rec, box rec only has like five of them. Um, okay. But yeah, that dude I fought was for when I was on the Olympic team because I was the number one in the country as a as a heavyweight as an amateur. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is which is two which is two hundred pounds on uh, amateurs because you got heavyweight and super heavyweight. Um, but yeah, man, I was, I was a little guy for making it to the Olympic team and the most inexperienced, you know, with 17 amateur fights, I made it to the Olympic team. Um, so I competed in uh, Germany and that's when I fought Julio Castillo, the Ecuadorian guy that totally fucked me up in the first round. Um, but it was a learning experience. I was away from home. I had a, you know, I had a, a broken hand actually, actually a fractured hand, um, but yeah, I, I didn't know it was that bad at the time. I was fighting through an injury, and uh, yeah, I went over there and got fucked up, and then uh, you know learned from it and just stuck with it. And here I am. You know, I'm undefeated as a pro now, uh, and looking to do some big things in bare knuckle here. I would say, like, with all that experience that you have, do you think? I mean, I don't know if you want to like sound cocky, but do you feel like your skill set is a, a different level than, than most of the field in front of you in bare 100%, 100%, 1,000%. Yeah. I think I'm going to fucking smoke this guy. I'm about to fight on the third. I think I'm going to fucking smoke him real quick, real quick. And then and, and is, is, are you guys fighting at 175? At 175. At 175, dude, you're a fucking monster for 175. I can't imagine like, like what you're i mean i would imagine a, a title is your end end game here but like how soon do you think that the bkfc is going to start throwing you in there with with the more well-known 175ers in, in the well company? they better they you know I, i'm gonna have to get paid for that this bare knuckle game is no joke man you know there's a lot of risk and you know i ain't trying to fuck up my face for free so you know, i'm just thinking gotta, like i'm thinking like you growing, and you know you, your size, your length, your skill, and like a guy like the champ, the, the reigning champ, Francisco Ricky, uh, like the two of you eye to eye in there would be very interesting. I mean, I'm not trying to say that you should be fighting the title for the title now, obviously, after one fight, but I'm just looking like a year down, you know, five, six fights down the road. You could you could fucking really be there for sure. For sure. That's the that's the plan. Uh, Frank is actually a really good friend of mine. Uh, we've sparred before. Um but yeah, man, I'm looking to to come in and, and do some damage and uh, obviously the 175 pound division. Um, you know, I'm going to take my time getting up there, you know, try to keep making money and, uh, you know, build up my purse value. And then uh, when it's time to step in there and, you know, take a real fight and a fucking bare knuckle fight, um, you know, hopefully the money's right.
What, not what saying you... that not saying that these aren't real fights. I'm just right. I just picture myself as extremely high level. So that's what I meant. I know that I know that like um when we first heard when we first were down there for your first fight in, in Hollywood and we were talking to Ryan and Ryan was like, Yeah, my boy, my boy Blake Davis over here is about to fucking blow your doors off. You're you're gonna be shocked. <laughs> and we're like, we're like, oh, okay. And so we pay attention and we watch, and like, like we said, you fucking smoke the dude, and then the whole crowd just goes absolutely fucking nuts. And me and him are standing there down by the you know, like we're like 15 feet from the ring off to the side, and we're like looking around the place. We're like, Yeah. What the fuck yeah, what, is going what are we on? Missing? What did like, we miss here? <laughs> you know, like how the heck is this going on? Because it's yeah. like you, you know, you you were at the fight, so you see there's people that everyone knows, and then like there's people that are just starting to fight that people might know outside of the sport, but like if you don't follow each one of these fighters, you don't know who who a lot of these people are. Seventy five percent of the card is the first freaking fight on the damn uh, in BKFC, you know, because bare knuckles so yeah. easy. I mean, so easy, so new. So it's like you don't know who's fighting unless you're really diving into everybody's stories, you know? So it's like, boom, yeah. you fought and everyone's going crazy. You're like, who is this guy? Is he a superstar over here? Like, I don't know. You know, it was wild. It was wild. And you yeah. had that guy. Uh, We're like, is this really guy another R&B singer from Miami? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm no yes. R&B singer, man. I'm just no. a, a local Davey slash super kid, Cooper City kid, you know? That's cool, um, man. Where, where do you been, train? Where do you, where do you, I, which, I train in gym? my backyard. I train with uh, Kevin Gleason, and um, it's a small gym in Sunrise. I train with Ryan at Slaughterhouse at KO Zone. Nice. Um, so I'm all over the place, man. I do my strength conditioning with uh, TJ and Boca. Um, so I kind of, you know, I'm controlling my own camps and, you know, doing things and listening to my body, man, you know. Where do you where do you see like the guys that like when you look around that gym when you're over at KO Zone and like we've been talking to a lot of your your guys over there the last couple of days and like how many champions you see in there like being a guy who's been through a lot and you know been on the Olympic team and you know you've been around and you've done some things um, when you when you are, are sitting there looking at your teammates in there how many champions you see. I think there's some champions in there, man. I feel like there's like I'm not gonna give numbers or individual <laughs> names or anything, you know. It's a loaded question, Kyle. Uh, God no, damn I'm it. just saying, so, like, I mean, uh, I, I feel like yeah. I feel like they have one contender in almost every weight class. Like they they legit have somebody that could possibly fucking contend in every single weight class in the BKFC from fucking one twenty five up. It's just really yeah. wild the, the the team that they're building at Slaughterhouse for sure. Well, Ryan's definitely a big plug, man. You know, he's known. Um, he's a good dude. He's always been good to me. Um, like you said, Ryan said I was gonna blow the doors off that night because Ryan was actually there for my my very first amateur fight when I flew to the Ringside World Championships in Kansas City and won the whole tournament. On my very first amateur fight, I fought four days in a row. Can you watch that somewhere? Is that uh, is that uh, on YouTube? Uh, no, it's not. No. And then I actually, Ryan actually saw me at a couple other tournaments, and I was going there by myself. So that's why he really developed so much respect for me because he was seeing me at these tournaments, and I'd literally be by myself. I didn't have no trainer, no nothing. I would just buy a plane ticket to wherever these wow. tournaments were and, and go there and win the tournament and then go home with a belt. <laughs> Wow. Sometimes you, that's how, what you got to do, fucking, huh? That's pretty badass, man. Hey, tell us about Bryce Henry. Like everybody, like everyone's talking about Bryce Henry. Can you, can you tell us? Bryce, about Bryce is an elite level fighter, man. Yeah, that's what, that's what we hear out of everybody. And I, all I, all we hear is that you, they can't find an opponent for him. You know? Yeah. I mean, Bryce is elite level, man. You know, I sparred him at the very beginning of my camp this camp um you know i was out of shape just getting in, into shape again just starting to spar again but you know he put the work on me you know um be honest about that but you know i'm in shape now so it'd probably be different but rice is an elite level fighter man you know and i think he's got a bright future in boxing i think he will be a world champion undeniable yeah we keep hearing a lot about him 
you know, Ryan's been talking about him a lot. A lot of the fighters have been talking about him. I can't wait to see him personally. However, I want to just swing this back a little bit because we talked about you having uh, your own promotion. And I was just mm -hmm. wondering, like, how did you just how did you put that together? How do you start that? How do you get into that? And uh, where is it now? And how can we see it? Um, well, I got into it because of uh, some promoters I was working with at the time uh, that were not treating me properly and actually tried to set me up change my opponent a day of the way and try to catch me a loss. Um, you know, uh, that was at the Hard Rock, my third pro fight. That, that fight was a war. I cut my eye, couldn't see out my left eye. Um, real close fight, would have been a draw if I didn't drop the guy in the first round. Um, so I won that fight and I was like, fuck this shit. Fuck you, you know, I'll do this shit myself. I'm bringing you $28,000 in tickets and you don't want to pay me shit and then you're going to try to set me up. So fuck you and I did that shit, man, you know. And ran them out of the industry pretty much. And you just knew a bunch of people to put in the right positions. And you were like, let's do this, 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 and this and get it started. You just went for it. Yeah. I mean, I just got my promoter's license and I was the first one down here to really do that. And you know, honestly, I feel like I fucked up the whole boxing industry because of that locally down here, because everyone saw me doing a promotion and then now all of a sudden everyone wants to do the promotion themselves so now there's so many local boxing shows and so many local promoters it's just so strung out so boxing is just extremely fucked up right now locally <clears throat> um i don't think anybody's making money promotion wise um but yeah man that's why i'm uh got out of it and now i'm doing bare knuckle i don't have to worry about none of that shit if anybody's interested down at the bottom, we have it going across the screen, badpromotions.com. And if you go there and take a look at the pictures, I mean, it looks good. If you look at the pictures, it looks like a very nice setup. It's nice and clean. The photography's clean. Like that. I, I love it. I, I think that that's a big deal. You know, some, some people like they have promotions and I get it. It probably costs, it's a lot of time, a lot of money. You got to invest into it. But you got to do it the right way. And I feel like it, it, it looks like you're doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. Yeah. And now, you know, I don't know if I'm able to announce it yet, but I do got some big news coming with bad promotions. Uh, I just don't know if I can announce it publicly yet. But just know that there is probably going to be some shows coming up. Not that I'm fighting in, but um, some some good shows coming up. Beautiful. Nice. Dude, that's awesome, man. We appreciate you uh, coming on here and telling us all about that. And I can't wait to see you back in the in the squared circle. B, BKFC yeah, I can't 30, wait to, four, to 30, be four, back in there. BKFC 34, December 3rd, Hollywood Hard Rock. He's going to sell the damn place out again. He's going to go out there mm -hmm. and do his thing. We're going to run you through four questions real quick, and then we're going to let you get up out of here, dude. All you got to do is pick one. We're going to give you three things. Pick the one you pick. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Biking, running, swimming. What do you got? Ooh, I'm gonna have to go with running. Running, nice. Two, The Sopranos, The Wire, or Breaking Bad? I've only seen the Breaking Bad. I know The Sopranos. I know the Wire. I don't even know The Wire, honestly. But Breaking Bad, I don't really know the other one. So Breaking Bad. Oh man, they're so, they're, both, they're all classic, but they're yeah. they are. Did so you liked Breaking Bad? Yes. It's uh, you, you're you will like the Sopranos, The Wire. They're they're all sort of different, but the same in a way. Like they're all awesome series. They're all, cut, in, like, they're the all cut from the same cloth. They're they all are. they're all like anti-hero crime ridden. You like you're rooting for the bad guy and all them fucking mm -hmm. shows, yep. dude. And uh, here we go. Here we go. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, I have to say dinner. Not a breakfast guy? Not at all. I usually yeah. intermittent fast. Oh, nice. Really? What you know, about Brenner? I spar in the morning. Yeah, you know, we, we, we eat breakfast for dinner at least once a week in my house. Yeah. Just because we don't eat breakfast a lot, but we do love, like, eggs and bacon, sausage, and all that shit. So, gotcha. yeah, like, every, you know, midweek, we're, we're, we're cooking breakfast. At our house. My, I have two sons, so. They're little fucking garbage disposals, so I gotta fucking. <laughs> it's easy to chef up. Go go, like whip up some eggs real quick. quick. Yeah, it's too easy to, to chef up some eggs. You know. And last one for you, man. Doctor Dre, Ice Cube, or Snoop Dogg? 
Mm, wow. Um, Only pick one. Wow. I guess Dre. Without Dre, you wouldn't have any of the other ones. Exactly. <laughs> In fact, there it is, man. Bryce, da uh, Blake Davis, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. Uh, everybody stay tuned December 3rd when he goes in there once again. Do you have any final words for anybody that's that's uh, tuning in? Um, if you're buying, if you're going to buy tickets, try to buy them through me so I can get credit for it. That's all. You know, hit me up. My Instagram is baddavis954. Um, and I'm super excited for this fight. I cannot wait. I've been sparring so much this camp. I've been <laughs> got over 60 rounds of sparring. I'm in crazy shape. I'm looking super sharp. And I just can't wait to go out there and fuck this dude up. Did you get any sparring in with Joey Beltran before he headed out to uh, Nebraska? I did at the beginning of the camp. Did at the beginning? It's, uh, it's, it's cool to see an old veteran like him almost he was on with us last week and he it's almost like he hit the reset button and like started over like he he said he he knows a lot he knew a lot of things from 20 plus years of fighting but like it's almost back to the basics and and getting back to technique and shit and and maybe stop taking so many goddamn shots to give one and uh <laughs> yeah no he's definitely looking much better he's moving his yeah. head more um, that's good he just looks better <laughs> i like that he's uh you know, he he lost the weight, you know, because I feel like he gains a lot of weight uh, in between fights and stuff. Uh, but, you know, towards the end of his camp, he was he was looking nice, man. You know, he was moving a lot better. His endurance was great. Um, throwing good punches. So he's moving his head, man. That's that's what I thought his biggest thing was. But now he's moving his head. So there it is, man. Bad Blake Davis, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time tonight. And uh, shout out to you and your whole team over there at Slaughterhouse. And uh, good luck to you guys. If not that you need luck, but, you know, we'll see you on December 3rd, huh? Definitely. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Have a Take good one. Later, guys. Yeah. Later. There he is. Bad Blake Davis. That dude is six foot five. You guys understand that? Yeah, it's very tall. He is six it's foot five. 175 pound division he's got like a fucking i don't know what is he's a 80 80 80 and a half inch reach he's got an 80 inch reach yeah the fucking dude is huge and i just can't i can't imagine like he's obviously ultra talented and he's been been around and done a lot in traditional right. boxing and been very successful with that Man, I can't wait to see like him get a few wins under his belt and the BKFC realize that they got a guy who they could throw in there with uh you know Francisco Ricky and and Mike Perry and you know uh Mike Richmond and like I think he fucking hangs with these guys, dude. I don't know. I'm only basing it off of the one fight that I saw, but he was, well, you know, uh, he's got, you know, he has a background in boxing and, you know, if he shows out in this fight and the next fight, then you kind of, you'll be able to like gauge like, okay, you know, he's, he's got what it takes to, to get in there and hang with the, with the big dogs. It's, it's just because the sport's so new, you get to see that so fast, you know, if you watch fighting and you follow bare knuckle, you can find out pretty quickly who's going to do well when you see them fight, you know, uh, it's not really hard to tell you you know you see some of these guys get in there and then i i my hat off to them I, i'm not doing that shit but i can tell right away when i see somebody fight like ah this guy's not gonna do too well Dude, they fuck are me. too fucking wild they're all over the place and tripping over their own feet you know what i mean so Uncle Pete it, it says it right levels. there buddy he's a goddamn olympian well that's right see yeah. so <laughs> he's a little bit different than uh your yeah. average joe Average Joe. No, no. Your no. average Giuseppe. He's different than your average Giuseppe, you know? Yeah, man. You know, uh, our our next guest is kind of MIA right now. Um, yeah, he's, he's out there on the train tracks making a, a music video or something. I'm not sure. Well, you think hold that's on. where I'm, he's at? I'm going to see if Ryan L. Riley can jump on and we'll. Uh... Yeah, get Ryan L. in here. Early, well, late, but early. You know, we do this late show Thursday night, weekday, like usual. 
because we're a couple of freaking workaholics <laughs> over here. Yeah, and, we, and we got a three day drill coming up, guys. And we are, yes, once we do. again. We it seems like every, it seems like every other fucking week we got drill, man. I swear. It is every other week technically because it was about two weekends ago. <laughs> you, it was only it? two weekends ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was only two week. You're right. It was only Basically, two weekends ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we get like one weekend off besides like because we go on these trips, you know. So it's like, oh, we got drill. And then we work, and then it's like go on the road for the fights. Then we come back. We have a couple days to do shit, which usually I spend about eight hours in my yard trying to clean shit up around here. And uh, then next thing you know, you're back at drill again. It's just wonderful, isn't it? You know what's awesome is I live right next door to um, what I would say. I kind of I call them the lawn slaves, dude. They are slaves to the, they are slaves to their lawn their whole life is like in their lawn the guys that in your in your neighborhood that just do their lawn every day right next door to me day. they do dude the guy like this is a guy who you know for the longest time sunday morning at like seven o'clock in the morning he's out there fucking mowing his lawn when we're oh, trying to God. sleep in until someone knows shit know, guy pe people said some shit and they somebody like let them know that the town ordinance says you cannot be doing that shit until eight o'clock in the morning on you know on the weekends and and and, and Try not and, to do that either, huh? Yeah. Try to do so, like so, 9, dude, 30, 10-ish, maybe. 9, I mean, 8.01, that motherfucker's out there. Man, 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 what is fucking goddamn. So in, in an, what, I'm, what, what I'm getting at here, dude, is this guy has got to be fucking hating me right now because I have been so busy with us traveling and work yeah. and this and that. My yard, I have not done a fucking thing with oh. the leaves in my yard there is like a sea of leaves in my yard and oh. his house right next door to mine is perfectly clean yeah that's like a line all your leaves are blowing <laughs> onto his lawn yeah and then a, a big gust, guy yo a big gust of wind comes and his guy leaves in his yard again he I, comes I out and starts picking him up with that yeah. little fucking thing uh, put him in a bag I know. Over. yeah dude i know he's i know it's it's killing him man i you cannot you know, having a nice lawn is wonderful because you go by, it's got the curb appeal. You know what I'm saying? It looks nice. It, it, it creates that nice atmosphere. I thought I wanted to do it until I lived in my house for three years. And now I'm like, I don't want to do that shit. Somebody else can do it for me. I'm I haven't started to pay anybody. So what happened is I just kind of like just do it when I have to get to it. And I keep it nice. I don't let it get too crazy. But I, it's not at all what it was the first year I was here. I was like out there, like fucking measuring the grass and cutting. Kind of like that's how I thought I was going to be every year, and that only no. lasted for one year. Nope. I was like, "Fuck nope. this! I'm too tired. I I can't do this. I'm one guy. You know how many fucking bags of leaves and shit? It, it's insane, right? It's insane. I I had like I had like forty bags of leaves out here, and I pulled like seven or eight fucking entire I hate gigantic it gigantic loads on. Fucking can't so, on tarps. I got to move my shoulder. I'm pulling them into the little bit of woods I have and dumping them out. I'm like, Fuck shit. dude, I hate it so listen, much. Here's the thing, Mike. Not that we're like loaded nowadays, but we do make enough money to pay somebody to come do the leaves for us. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, a couple it. years ago, a couple years ago, ladies and gentlemen, this was the greatest $200 I ever spent in my entire life. I'm, I'm in my house. Amy was deployed. So I'm home alone with the boys. And across the street, diagonally, there's this lawn company over there doing the leaves and shit for this, yeah. comp for the, for the neighbor. So I go over there and I talk to the dude. I'm like, Hey man, how much would it cost you to come across the street and do my yard? And, and my yard over at that time was fucking loaded with sticks and leaves and shit. And he, he's like, oh, we got an appointment to get to. And I'm like, can you just come take a look at my yard real quick? Man, I uh, I gave him, dude, I, I pulled the fucking, my wife's deployed yep. card yeah. on him. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, man, I'm just so, like so busy. My wife's deployed. I got the boys in the house, man. I was like, if you could just come over. He had an army of fucking leaf blower yeah. guys. He had like yeah, a dozen in a line. Dude, and they, he, he's like, he's like, you know what? I could, I, we can knock this out. 200 bucks. We can do yeah, it. and the way your yard's set up, they just go. It's wide. It's it's open, so they can kind of just line up in the front and the Dude, back and go this way. I or stood in the window. And they just suck it all up. <laughs> I stood in the window like this, just fucking. Yeah. <laughs> who's the master? Yeah, Show enough. Yeah. I was just like, who's the master? Show, Show enough. enough. Dude, 
from start to finish was probably 40 minutes. Those guys blew every leaf stick and acorn out my yard, vacuumed that shit up, and I looked like I fucking was the best lawn guy in the damn neighborhood, and I didn't lift a damn finger. I, I keep I saying so I'm going to do it. I even went so far to go to the guy who does a lawn moment. next yes, door, and is. I asked him, like, hey, what's up? Can you do my lawn? How much? This and that. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll give you a call. And then he texted me. He was like, I'm doing your neighbor's lawn today. You want me to do it? And I was like, nah, I can do it myself. You should have just did it. So I sure did it did myself it. while they were all next door. They actually was doing it. And they came the same day. And he pulls up. And I'm like looking at them. And I'm like by myself. My leaf blower. <laughs> nope. I'm too stubborn. I'm like, I ain't paying you guys. I'm going to do this shit myself. I'm telling you. I know. One day I'll do it. Uh, Kevin says uh, right now is jumping on. He says he's jumping nice. on because um, our, our other guest is uh, MIA at the moment. But uh, nah, man, you should w- just do it one of these times. And then you'll wait till you see how good you feel when you're standing on your back porch. <laughs> and it's already done. When I you're know. St- no, when you're, when you're watching it get done, you're just like, ah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm mm. home for it. Yeah, yeah, man. Nah, I mean, it's, uh, this is definitely the uh the time of the year that i hate being a homeowner in new england that's for sure wow you gotta climb up on the roof risk your life <laughs> clean out the gutters i gotta do that that's happening soon so if i'm hey. not on the show next week you know what happened i fucking slid down the roof and busted my neck because <laughs> i gotta oh, get up man. in that bitch and i'm not gonna fucking tell somebody to do it i'll get up there myself bullfrog actual <laughs> says you go you you strike that captain morgan pose that's right you get on that back porch you put your foot up on a chair yeah you take a sip of your drink and you feel proud of yourself dude you feel proud guys there's a fucking fight card there's a fight t- card tomorrow night on I the app oh we got that we, we got the app information that. at the bottom yeah. of the screen right now if you're not on the app already which you should be get on it because we got the joey beltran houston alexander card tomorrow night but dude yeah we you do. got you got sean wilson kevin Kroom on there you got you uh, carlos can't believe it's happening Trinidad, Trinidad Snake and our boy Ryan L. Riley's on that card. Um, Audra Cummings. Hey, there okay, you, here we are. There we go. Look at this card. Oh, man. And uh, did you see the dude that Cody lands fighting at the weigh-ins tonight? Did you see him? Oh, yeah. The Speedo dude? Yeah, this guy, this Stridum, guy. <laughs> Stridum or whatever his name is. from. Uh, he's I'm going to from... be nice. I can say a lot of funny things about this guy just through his pitcher. But... Yeah. <laughs> He looks like I, I but the know. funny thing is, is I look at the picture, not the best picture, right? I don't I think he's probably not too happy with it. But yeah. here's the thing. The dude was wearing a fucking speedo at the weigh ins. Right. So <laughs> like, yeah. I saw this picture. I created what I thought this guy would be. And then he did not disappoint at the weigh ins. He came out with a freaking speedo on and made everybody feel weird. Um, It was uh. Yeah, it was very funny. To be honest, I, uh, I, I definitely made fun of him a whole bunch in my head when I watched this. Like a yeah, lot. and and I, I, Cody Land's a good fighter, man. I, I, I feel like uh, that's going to be a decent. He one. He, he, that's going to be a decent one. But good the Dakota dude. Cochran, another one that does not get talked about a lot on this card, is Dakota Cochran's back in there. He's a hometown guy out out there. Yep. And he's fighting uh, this guy Eduardo Peralta, who's a three and three MMA fighter. I I wonder. I I honestly don't m- know much about Peralta, but I wonder if um if this is this is a coming back to the winning to the to the winning column fight for Dakota in his hometown. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, it very well could be. You know, yeah, he he's had a la- last couple outings have been a little tough for him with the. Mike Richmond and Josh Dyer. Those were two toughies. Uh, so, yeah, maybe hops back in the winning column and, and kind of starts making his way back up again. But uh, you... after that, we've got a few fights of people. So we got Will Shut. If you watch BK, you guys probably know who he is. And he then... went, he, Will Shut went to a draw against uh, Marcus Brimage in, in Brimage's. Uh... Yep solo fight i'm um i'm i'm resending out the invite right now to right yeah yeah i saw i saw and then here we go we got our girl ak-47 and she's fighting a doctor this woman shell tnt shell she's a goddamn doctor 
We did not know that until yesterday morning. We were searching, doing a little, doing a little bit of research, and we realized that she was a doctor. You go on Instagram and look her up. She's in phenomenal shape. Like she's she a is. Body, uh, I don't know. She's like she's, she's a, a fitness. She's, a, she's, she's a, a fitness competitor. Yeah, she's a fitness competitor. Like a like a she almost puts like the a tanning uh, oil yeah, stuff yeah. on and strikes a pose on stage. You know that type of stuff. The fancy stuff. Cito says she fine for a doctor. I would, yep. I would get <laughs> fine for for a doctor. There's a lot of ugly doctors. Okay, I got you. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had any fine ones. I can tell you that 100 percent, zero percent of my doctors have ever been fine. So yes, you've got a point. Uh, this guy Meyer, see his face there. Yes. He's like that in real life. <laughs> He's just like that in real. He came out and he was just like that. I was like, is this guy gonna be mean? He was mean. He came out with a mean face. He did the grr, and then he got in fucking Moffat's face and then pushed his forehead. Moffat didn't even move at all. Didn't even blink. He just stared at him like, ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> like he did the thing that everyone flips out at. It's like the your mom thing. Don't talk about my fucking mom. And people get mad. He did the forehead push at weigh-ins that usually has the whole fucking stage up in arms. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he did it, and the dude didn't move at all. And then he just kind of looked at him and was like, and then well, just looked forward. I was like, okay, well, that didn't work. A little, a little shady, gradyish, if you, yeah, if, you, if you will. Yeah. And I, uh, I remember what Ryan Reber, you know, what Ryan Reber, I hope this guy comes and show, uh, he shows up to fight tomorrow night because remember what Ryan Reber said about uh, Jack, Jack Shady Grady is the loudest guy in the room is, is usually the least dangerous or whatever the fuck it was. I, I can't remember what it was, but <laughs> <laughs> you remember what he said? Because I yeah. can't remember what yeah. he said. Remember he what said he said? I like don't, I sure don't. Beautiful. So Ryan O'Reilly, what he's having trouble getting on. What is this? Fucking 1997. Just... Yeah. He's supposed to be the crypto guy. He doesn't even know how to use the goddamn internet. <laughs> What's going on, Ryan L? We miss you. You need to get up on here. You get the yeah, fans we, are waiting. We need the fucking we need the black rhino back. Did you see him at the weigh-ins tonight, dude? The guy is. I, I know the dude's an, a, a freak Eighth wonder of the world. I think. I swear to God, when he when he did this, and the camera angle they had the the striations. I think they're called in between the muscles. Mm, very in, smart. Yeah, it's um, it's scary, dude. It looks like he walks around with about two percent body fat and fucking uh, you know, chews nails and fucking punches concrete walls. Dude's a fucking it, psycho. It doesn't make much sense to me. The guy is a goddamn animal. <laughs> I don't know how the hell he does it. It's so crazy. And then he goes out there and he fights like a madman. You think he's gonna pass out after throwing two punches, being that size? He fucking you ever see the like a fucking animal? You ever see the videos on his um on his Instagram of him shadow boxing in his backyard with 40 pound dumbbells in his oh hand? He's like holding 40 pound dumbbells, like throwing <laughs> he's got like, I'm like, what the fuck is that? You know, I, I hate I not, and I don't hate that he lost to Coruscant, but like because the guy like I don't have nothing against Coruscant, but man, that that fight was insane i thought he had that in the bag no doubt and just he's just such an animal man that fight was just so crazy and even his fight with truck on carson was insane i mean he doesn't have he's got these two fights and they're both the two of the wildest fights that you'll see in bkfc and so Lucido right there saying tomorrow he even, you know, spar him. i don't even want to spar him i mean the guy is a goddamn unit yeah, he is. He's an absolute now, unit of a Big Ben man. says, uh, being, uh, he's saying we're being hey, talked about a lot here. I freaking love it. Thank you. That's awesome. Shout out to everybody that's talking out there. Uh, I wish yeah. we could be there. I wish we could be at every fucking one of them, but we can't. Hey, let's talk about the main event real quick. Let's talk about yes. the main event. A revamped 205 Joey Beltran. Yep. Under a new, a new, under a new camp, new coaching, new teammates, new vibe. Obviously, he was not happy with his his last camp. Oh, he was not happy with Boxar. Um, yeah. yeah. Now he's fighting a, a fifty year old Houston Alexander who is in in incredible shape. He always is. The dude is freaking in is in insane shape for a fifty year old guy. And we've seen the power that Houston Alexander still packs. Oh yeah, that's just in wild. his two fights in the BKFC. He 
you know, pretty much destroyed his competition. Um, what do you think? How do you think this fight plays out tomorrow night? Do you do you, do you think that Beltran um, takes Houston into uh, deep deep waters here? I think he does. I think he does. So, I mean, obviously he's been in the sport since the beginning, right? Beltran. He's been fighting. He was the champ. He's had all the best guys in the heavyweight division right in front of him. Mm -hmm. He's smart enough when he fights. Yes, he got caught in his last fight. Props to to, uh, Big Frank. But that ain't going to happen. But the Every dude time. fight, yeah, the fight right before that was Arnold Adams, and they went the distance, and it really right. depended on the judging. Like it could have, if there was two other two different judges that night, they could have saw it different, and it could have gone to Joey. They, they could have, and no, and the thing is, is that yeah, he he's um he's smart. I I mean, he's probably not going to go in there and get knocked out again. I mean, the guy had I don't haven't seen him been knocked out like that for a while, you know. So it could have been a one-off. He had a bad night. Frank had a good night, or maybe he had a good night and Frank had a good night. You know, I, I don't know, but he lost. I don't think that's going to happen again. I know Houston has the power to do it. So it's not like it's impossible and it's not going to happen, but I don't think it will happen. And we really haven't seen Houston Alexander go too far, you know, past, you know, a minute in this yeah. sport. So like if Beltran's back to his uh, old games with his new tricks, then Houston Alexander could have a quite a fight on his hands because we know that that you know Joey doesn't back up. He's constantly going forward. He his output is second to none. When he starts getting going, man, it's like it, it, he he makes me tired just watching him because he's just always like leaning forward and moving. And you know Ryan has kind of tweaked him up. So I can't wait to see what he's learned from Slaughterhouse. Who says that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, you know? Absolutely, dude. And and like being 50 years old, right? I'm 40 right now. And I am no pro athlete. But I can't imagine the the 10-year age gap difference in those two guys and the cardio that we know Joey has. I don't. I don't want to like blame it on his age, but I, I, if it goes past the first, I would imagine that Houston's fucking chances of winning that fight goes down tenfold. You know what I mean? Once it goes into the second, and if it makes it into the third, I wouldn't imagine he has much of a, a chance at all after that. You know what I mean? And Big Ben asked a question a little earlier, and he said, did he get caught or did he have three other way more serious things going on? The answer is yes to both of those things. Right. Ben, right. he did have three serious things going on in his life. Of course, we talked about it and everybody knows the Beltran story and uh, we were all feeling for those guys. And yet, and he talked, he talked extensively about getting knocked out, um, you know, 21 days before the fight and, and thinking he shouldn't even be fighting. We all know that yeah. whole thing, but yeah. he did get caught by Frank Tate. So yeah. Frank also landed that punch. And he also landed a second one, like as Joey was going down, he popped yes, him like, he like one other time. So yes, the can the answer is yes to both of those. And um, you know, we don't usually pick side pick pick sides here, but if I if you if I had to, you know, say who I would think is gonna win that one, it's gonna be Joey. But I would not be surprised at all if Houston landed landed one, man. All he needs is one. It's, it's the fight game. All you need is one. He's got some heavy hands, too. You can just see when he swings how heavy those hands are. It, it's just so amazing that a guy that's fucking 50 years old is in there slinging bare knuckles. It is just so wild. And 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 what a good dude, too. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. When you that that's the that's the hardest part. When that, so in Orlando, we're watching Jared Warren and Jay Jackson fight. And I got to tell you, that's one fight. And this has happened before watching fighters fight. But like those two guys, I just didn't want either one of them to lose. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I yeah. did not want to see either one of those guys walk out with their head down and talk to them afterwards. Like I just feel so bad. 
You know what I mean? It's like, you know them. So then it's like, oh, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to talk to Jay Jackson after he lost the fight. Like, I feel so bad. Like, you know, he's trained so hard. We, we were out to dinner with him the night before, you know, you're like not rooting for him to beat Jared, but you're also not rooting for Jared to beat him. It's like, I just cut it down. Yeah. That's one of those ones where you get back and watch it. And and yeah, it's, it's hard when you're in the mix, you know? Yeah, man. Um, so our, our, our last guest of the evening is in the waiting room right now. We're going to bring him on right away. He is getting back in there after an absolute fucking war. The last time we saw him, was that in Tampa? Oh, always wars. The guy, I know the guy's in Tampa. Yes. It was in Tampa. I mean, he, he was in that absolute insane fight with truck on Carson. The first time we saw him and then he (laughs) He fucked. Course, he just got out of the stitching. He just got out of from getting stitches for when we were there. He they just let him out of that room. I feel like this guy was getting stitches in that room for fucking 45 minutes. Yeah. God. Yeah, man. All right, let's bring him on. The the black rhino himself, Ryan L. Riley, who is gonna be back in there tomorrow night against Carlos Trinidad Snake. Here he is. What's up, buddy? Looking fresh. Yo, what up, guys? Always got the baddest chains in the fucking world on, yep. dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like that chain would give me a fucking nerve damage that would uh, make me not feel my thumbs. Yeah, I can't wear it all the time, man. You can't wear it all the time. It's, it's like two pounds. pounds. Yeah. It's like giving yourself a like a nice neck workout and also showing off the bling, you know, at the same time. Yeah, point. you know, I got good traps, man. It holds it up. <laughs> yeah, man, we saw you at the uh, at the weigh-ins today. Of course, you are always in the best shape in the fucking room. Of course, um, how you feeling, man? Getting in there. I know that uh, y- you had a little uh, issue getting out there yesterday, so that's probably a pain in the ass for sure. But you- you're there. You made weight. Yeah. How- how's it going, man? I'm feeling good, man. Feeling strong. Uh, it's been a long day, you know. It's- but uh, I cut the weight like I needed to and uh, made weight properly. I'm um, hydrated now, so I feel good now. I don't feel like crap, you know, but uh, I'm ready to go, man. You're ready to go. And like like we just talked about, man, uh, you heard it in the intro there for you. Your fight with Truck and Carson yeah. was like something that nobody had fucking seen before. Like you guys, that shit was insanity. And you ended up breaking, I think you ended up breaking both of his fucking orbitals or something like that in that fight. That shit was wild as hell. You got the win there, and then you come out, and you come out like a fucking absolute terminator against Corson. And we thought that that dude was done early. I mean, I don't know if we've talked to you since that fight. Like, can you talk a little bit about that fight with him and, uh, and, and, and about that opponent that you had that night? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's really not much to say about that fight, uh, to be honest with you. You know, I feel like, um, uh, there were some instances where, you know, I just let him off the hook, you know, uh, that was, um, a situation where, you know, you, you kind of, uh, just think of it as, uh, you know, playing with your food, you know, it bit me in the ass, you know, uh, once I saw him hurt, I should have just took him out, but I didn't jump on him and, you know, I let some things, uh, happen you know, that I could have avoided. Did, what, yeah. When you saw him and you, in your head, did you have like a little f- argument with yourself? Like, oh, I should just take him out now. But then you don't want to do that because you don't want to waste all your energy just in case. And yeah. then you're kind of at the end, you're like, fuck, I should have just went for it. Yeah, man, I, I just didn't take him out. You know, you know, he's a tough, tough guy. You know, he, uh, he got back up. You know, I, I caught him with some good shots. He got up. Uh, definitely was unexpected, you know, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, looking forward to, uh, that happening again. No, now you're, uh, your fights are goddamn insane. I I think that you might have two of the craziest fights I've ever seen. (laughs) And yeah, I I gotta keep, I gotta keep that streak going, but, uh, more violent. There you go. Now, uh, Felix Trinidad and not Felix, uh, Carlos. Is it Carlos Trinidad Snake? Yeah. Carlos. Car- Why did I say Felix? Oh, because Felix Trinidad. Okay. Yeah, Felix Trinidad. Yeah. Get your shit together, Kyle. Um, <laughs> Trinidad Snake, man. He's he's a tough dude. He's got a couple wins yeah. under his belt. Um, what do you think about this opponent that they've offered to you? Uh, I appreciate him stepping up to fight. You know, um, you know, there's another guy in my way, you know, to, to, Uh, get to where I need to get to. So I got to take him out, but, um, you know, no disrespect to him. 
um, you know, honored to fight him. You know, it's, it it takes a lot to step up and um, you know get in there. You know, and I appreciate him. You know, staying consistent with you know whatever camp he had or whatever, and and uh, you know he's he's ready to go. You know, a lot of guys they pulled out. You know, I had a situation where you know multiple opponents pulled out had a had an uh, an excuse to why they couldn't fight. So you know that's how the question thing came about anyway. But you know, I, I appreciate him stepping up. I wanted to ask you that. Do you guys have a hard time finding opponents? And I think you just answered it. Like, it, is it a tough task for Kevin to find you uh, some, or, or Nate to find someone for you that is uh, willing to actually step in there? <clears throat> uh, I'm going to consider it in the past. You know, um, I, you know, Kevin's got this new partnership. And, um, you know, I, I feel like things moving forward uh, be much more smoother for me as far as finding opponents. Yeah, yeah, I can see where uh, you'd probably have a couple people not wanting to fight, you know, because <laughs> yeah. and you and you've got two, and we've I've talked about this already today. Like, there, it's such a new sport that yeah. you don't know a lot of the guys who are fighting in this and the women because they're coming from all these different sports. So they could be a big name in one sport, and then you see an O and O, and you're like, oh, this is a debut guy, and he's like, hold yeah. on a second. You know, and then these yeah. guys come in and they see your two fights and they go, hold on. You know, I don't know if I want to start off here. Let me start off over here yeah. instead, you know, get my feet wet. I don't want to fucking go to war with this dude on my first yeah. fight, you know. So, yeah, I absolutely. Can understand. And, and, you know, you know, for me, like, you know, hands off to, to Truck and Carson, because um, I appreciate that fight even more because, like, it could have been a situation to where I could have got just fed some duck, you know. But they gave me a tough opponent out the gate. So I had to prove myself, you know, worthy to even be here out the gate. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they just, you know, sent some duck for me to, you know, just pound on and, and get them out of there. You know, they sent a tough competitor. And, uh, you know, even with Corson, you know, he turned out to be a, a, a game-bred guy for him to even step up, <clears throat> you know, on, on such a short notice. So I'd give him that too, um, you know, just, despite the, uh, the, the little hiccups we had you know, that cost me to fight, but I mean, they're not, you know, they're not, um, you know, feeding ducks to me. So, you know, right. I, I feel like I'm proving myself even, you know, in that aspect of becoming one of the top guys, you know, because I don't just have a, uh, I'm not a, a guy that that's coming in and, and building my record on, on ducks. You know who, um, the fan in me, the fan in me wants to see a Ryan L. Riley, Joe Elmore fight at 165 pounds. I feel like. Oh yeah, Joe's. Yeah, Joe's a beast. I feel like you. I think I feel like you and Elmore would put on a fucking goddamn disaster piece. You know what I mean? Like a bloody (laughs) fucking masterpiece (laughs) that that all the bare knuckle fans in the world would would get a fucking treat that night. So I hope that you know. You could string to get. I don't know what it would take to get a Joe Elmore and Ryan O'Reilly. I don't know if you need to get like two or three wins because he's but he hasn't he's lost a couple he's in lost a, row. a couple yeah he's lost, he's lost a, couple a couple in a row so, so maybe maybe right you here. yeah man maybe you go out there you get a win and fucking that that way oh my god as as a fan Who knows? Wish, it be, wish it would be amazing uh in yeah. the comment section big ben says i think ryan l and tony soto would be great too it's like there are matchups that make sense that would would be very entertaining and fucking fantastic for us as fans. Yeah. It's just a matter of if it makes sense business wise, you know. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, moving it's, forward, man, I, I just want to prove that I'm, I'm the best in my weight class. You know, so I got to take care of business. How's it's Omaha? Good. Yeah, I was just gonna ask that. Too. Uh, it's cold as hell, man. I'm st- yeah. I still got my jacket, and I'm in a hotel. I bet because both times you fought was in Tampa, right? And then, so, you know, what I, mean? I yeah. hate the cold weather so much. We were talking shit all day about it today. It's just that today was like the one of the first very cold days up here, and I just can't stand it. So I can just imagine you going from the heat and then moving up there. Oof. Yeah, at first it wasn't that bad. Like it was just dry cold. You know, it was wasn't that yeah. bad. And then the wind started kicking up, oh. and it was like, yeah, just eating through oh. this jacket, man. <laughs> Dude, oh, no big in the comments, Big Ben says it's twelve degrees there right now. Good. Oh God, fuck! Right now, 
Yeah, that's what he says. I mean, I'm gonna have to look it up. Crazy, I'll man. take his word for it. Did you guys see the weather report for the uh, Buffalo, uh, Buffalo, New York? The 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 Buffalo Bills, uh, Cleveland Browns game might be in jeopardy because they're looking at getting somewhere from four to six feet of snow. Yes, oh, yeah, wow. I did hear about that. Four <laughs> feet of snow. Yeah, yeah. And when they start that's saying, crazy. I can't do it, man. Yeah, feet. Come on, what feet? You know, when my in my first deployment right now, we uh we mobbed out of uh Fort Drum, New York to mm-hmm. go to the Middle East, to go to Iraq, you know, when the, at the beginning of the war in 2003. So we go to Fort Drum. It was negative 30 degrees every fucking day for a month straight. And it snowed every single day we were there. There uh, was there was Duke snow City. mounds. There was snow mounds on the side of the roads, twenty feet tall, and um, that's insane. That's insane. And all the locals, all the locals there, rode around <laughs> on snow on snowmobiles, dude. It was absolutely insane. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, you're in a hundred and thirty degrees in freaking Kuwait and Iraq. Yeah. It's the worst. And there's <laughs> fucking sand in your eyes and shit. It's the worst. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. And and Bullfrog Actual in the comments. This is a funny thing because but it's a be, dry heat. He oh, must yeah. be in the military because that is what everybody says. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like sure. heat is heat, but yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like it's sometimes when it's humid, it's like it's hell, man. But when it's dry heat, it's not as bad. Just depends. <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you what, open up the oven door when you're cooking something and you feel that air coming out or like you hold like a, a blow <laughs> yeah. dryer to your face. That's, that's what, what it feels, feels like. like. It really yeah, does. Dry, yeah, that's, that's crazy. When Ugh. you walk, oh, dude, when you walk out of your, so when you're overseas too, back then we were living in tent city overseas and the AC in the tents works like a motherfucker, dude. It's, it's ran off of like a goddamn generator that blows like walk-in refrigerators. You know what I mean? So- Mm. Our our tents were like sixty degrees. Nice walk out of the tent to one hundred and twenty five degrees. <laughs> That's just fucking hits you right in the face, man. Crazy man. Shit is wild. Um, hey, that's, that's warrior shit. I mean, I'll never want to. I never want to do it again. I'll tell you that much. I'm yeah. done with that shit. I'm done with that shit. That's. <laughs> I'm, I've been in the military for twenty two years. If they told me I had to deploy tomorrow. I would drop my retirement yeah. letter and I'd be yeah. like, see you later guys. I'm going to go watch BKFC for the rest of my life and never going to see you again. Uh, <laughs> hey no man, doubt, the, tra- man. The, the, the training camp for this one. Um, did you change anything up? Did, did, is it all status quo for you heading into another war? Uh, change some things up. Yeah. Change some things up, man. Uh, actually had a really good camp. It was a, a smooth camp, intense, and um, we focused on uh, changing some things up and, and just going back to the basics, too, because um, um, with my former uh, professional boxing uh, coach, you know, when I turned pro, it was with, with uh, my current coach. So um, we, we went back to some things that, uh, that I'm really dominated in, and you brought some things back and added some things that I wasn't so good at, We've just been making tweaks and adjustments, man. I mean, I would imagine you learn something new with every fight, being that it's a new sport for you, and uh, you're only two fights into your BKFC or your bare knuckle career here. Um, yeah, I would imagine after every fight, you fight, you pit, you pluck a, l- a couple things here and there out of every single fight. You tweak a little bit in your training camp, and you know, just keep on, keep on, yeah. keep getting it better, you know. Kevin's is back yeah, to basics. Going, going to break some ribs and skills, jumps. It's a, the skill aspect of it and the mental aspect of it, you know, that that I go through, you know, because uh, there's either a piece of me that dies or there's a piece of me that was reborn, you know. So um, I feel like <laughs> there's been uh, some, some new pieces uh, that was birthed from that last fight, you know, that I had to implement moving forward. Yeah, man. Um, well, we don't want to keep you all night. We we appreciate you getting on here. We always want to talk to you before your fights. I got your social medias across the bottom there right now. Everybody has to go follow him on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. And do you have a referral code on your Instagram for Bare Knuckle for the for the app? Yeah. No, 
<laughs> Kevin yeah. Smith, I need my referral card. I still haven't got it. Yeah. Uh, but I never I never bug him about it. Yeah. All right. Well then we won't tell people to use He'll your you referral code. One real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't have I don't have one. I don't worry about it. Man. I just share his. All good, brother. All good. Um, it's always great to talk to you. We're gonna run through four questions. We're gonna play a game called pick one. All we're gonna do is offer you three things and you gotta pick one, okay? Pick one with the black rhino. Right. Here we go. First one, GSP, John Jones, Demetrius Johnson. Pick one. Demetrius Johnson. Woo! Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. The most the 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 best overall skill wise fighter out of the three, right? Absolutely. People forget, about, people forget about DJ. Here we go. Highlight real knockout of the night. Totally dominating performance of the night or all out back and forth war fight of the night. Which one? Totally dominating performance of the night. There it is. To showcase go. them skills. <laughs> showcase them yeah. skills. Get out of there untouched to take home your check, man. Here we go. Wu-Tang Clan outcast a tribe mm. called Quest. <laughs> oh man. Uh I'm from the South, man. I gotta go with Outcast. Hey, that's you know what? When I'm when I'm writing all these things out and I'm prepping for the show, I I yeah. ask a lot of people around me these and um I was surprised how many people picked Outcast out of those three choices today. Yeah. Up here up here in the northeast, Wu Tang Clan. Oh yeah. Wu Tang is uh is everything up here. And um yeah. My own wife, she goes, oh, outcast. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah like, the the classics, the classics, man. Like, I'm bumping equipment I like on a whole run. Like, I'm just the whole album, just on my run. Yeah. I mean, the AT Aliens album was the one that. Yeah. I, that, yeah. I had the Southern Playlist of Cadillac Music. That album was great too, but it was the second album that, like, had me fall in love with that group. And then equipment I and all the other ones came out. And it's like, yeah, they're legends for sure. Last one. Here we go. Money, power, respect. Pick one. Uh, pick one. Power. Yeah. Power. <laughs> he takes power. And what is the reason behind it? Didn't Scarface you have say first power, you get, didn't Scarface, you get the money. I thought Scarface said you get the money. And then you, when we get the money, you get the power. The power. The power, you get the respect. Get the respect. But, yeah, so, uh, you know, from my perspective, you have the power because that's mental, right? So using your mind, you're able to attract things that, uh, you know, that can, you know, coexist with, with that, you know, and the money comes and the respect comes with that. There you Very go. Nice. Knowledgeable Very man, nice. wise yeah, man. Internal, 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 man. It's all internal. You know, Ryan L. Riley is a wise man and we met him a couple, you know, six, eight months back. And we learned that the first night we went out with uh, Mike's sister-in-law and we, yeah, learned we, were, we were, yeah. went to Winwood. Yeah, we went to Winwood. We had a good, good time. He, he's, a, he's a smart dude, but he can also knock yeah, we had a good your, time, man. your brain. And uh, go ahead <laughs> and say, yeah, go ahead and say a, a few last words, a message to anybody that needs to hear it. And then we'll let you get out of here. Um, I appreciate everybody that supported me, everybody that has continued to to follow me on my journey. Uh, shout out to, you know, my real supporters, man, the, the, the day ones and the newcomers as well. That's that's uh, attaching to the Black Rhino brand. I appreciate you guys. Uh, shout out to my sponsor, Knockout Canada and uh, Kevin Smith, Smith Brothers, Slaughterhouse, uh, my family, you know, everybody that's tuning in constantly and supporting me. And um, just just keep tuning in, and uh, I'm I'm gonna shock the world. I can't don't wait. miss this. Don't miss this one tomorrow night, guys. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Uh, thank you very much for popping in. As always, shout out to you. Shout out to Kev, and uh, shout out to the whole team. Uh, Mike, you got anything else for uh, Rhino here? Hey, man. I wish we were there so we can go out and get some Chinese food and. Fucking yeah. hang out, and then see you fucking get in there and and be the fucking loose unit that you are when you get in that ring. But uh, we'll have to watch it on TV, I guess, and we'll catch up with you later. All right, guys, I appreciate you. All right, man. all right, take, take it, it easy. easy. All right, all right. There he is, the real loose unit when he gets in that really? ring. You he, better watch he, out. He's a fucking wild man in that squared circle for sure, yeah. and and like the power 
that that dude possesses is scary. I mean, <laughs> it's scary, man. Dude, look at Truck and Carson's face in that in that fight. Trucking was doing all right with him. They were trading, but dude, the Truckin's difference a is a goddamn beast too. You yeah, fucking guy is like you look at him. He's such a nice guy. He's got his nice long pretty hair. He's fucking super cool, like kind of like a surfer type attitude, dude. You know what I mean? Like he's just very laid back. You know, hey, hey, in the comments, there. gets in there and fucking. Susan says that chain was huge. Susan, <laughs> you, you should see it in person. That fucking yeah. thing is massive. I'm yeah. telling you, it looked big on the screen here. But like when we went out with him in Winwood, he was weighs more that. than my fucking daughter. Yeah, yeah. That thing's like a 30 pound chain on his freaking neck. It's nuts. Um, everyone needs to pay attention to the red corner t- tomorrow night because you know, buddy of ours, loyal supporter of Mike and Mish since day one, Big Ben will be in the red corner tomorrow night. He will be the guy who's big. Yes. Very big. And then you will know that that is Ben because he is big. You know, and uh, if if Ben really loves us, he will have a Mission Accomplished t-shirt on in that <laughs> co- <laughs> in that corner tomorrow night, dude. Oh, uh, man. Tomorrow. You don't have to do that, Ben. I'm just fucking with you. But uh, awesome show tonight. We We did lose one. One yep. guest tonight. I don't know what happened. It's still ten fifty one somehow. I don't know how we do this, but we always do end up going way later, and yeah. uh, we're almost on two hours. But uh, we're gonna call it a night. Me and Mike have a uh, a three day drill coming up starting tomorrow, and guys, uh, it'll be my second to last drill as as the, as the papa, and uh, and I'm looking forward to as minimal problems as i could possibly have in the next yeah. three days <laughs> put more then he gets to put more time into the show see yeah 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 i'm gonna devote so much time to this show after that it's gonna be amazing i have the opposite trajectory at this point than you do you're mike's like gonna, mike's towards the end of your career and you just guy. got to the now you're trying to get down to the fucking retirement i'm the i'm fucking going up the ladder taking on more and more responsibility. So I'm getting busier and you are trying to get rid of the busy. You're going to be a first sergeant one day, Mike. I 100% am going to be a first sergeant and probably a sergeant major. So see, it's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Mike, Mike's a real loose unit himself. He gets, he gets shit done. I'm telling yeah. you. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't just say this because you're my buddy here, man. You're a squared away soldier. And where I'm at right now, I'm seven. How many years ahead of you in this fucking shit? I, I got 22. You eight. got what? I got eight more. So I can't even imagine where you can be in eight years in the military. And uh, God bless you, buddy, because there's a lot of fucking issues that go along with it. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Don't I you start, know it. You start getting headaches back here and pain in your neck for no fucking reason at all. That's why I say people are pain in the neck. See, you yeah. figured it out. You figured it out physically. Your emails get flooded. Your phone keeps ringing. It's gonna be a great time for you, buddy. And I look forward to the future. And guys, pay attention tomorrow night. BKFC thirty three in Omaha, Nebraska. Joey Beltran versus Houston Alexander, and our boy. Ryan O'Reilly that was on here with us tonight is going to be showcasing his fucking power once again. Can't wait to see the show tomorrow night. Mike, you got anything else for these peeps? Can't wait for tomorrow. Everybody better tune the hell in and maybe we'll get online and talk to each other. Not on the show, but like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our thumbs. Exactly. With our thumbs. All right. Good night, everyone. Peace. Peace.